y'all put your hand together, everybody.
you FaceTime and you FaceTime and Jesus, you on the FaceTime with Jesus. What y'all doing? Get in the ground. Get in the ground. Oh, you get your seed you get in the ground. Seed you get your seed in the ground. seed in the ground. Wow. Now, wait a minute. You can get your seed into the ground right from your phone? Yeah, you can. Wait a minute. Text now, to text, to to give. Give. text to give. Text to give. Yeah. You never Hold heard on. of it? You, you never heard of it? Wait a minute. Y'all look. Text to give. Te- how do we do it? Come on, because there's some that have their phones out now, too, and they want to worship. How can we worship? Uh, just go onto your mobile phone, type my worship, and easy you, like that. And there, and there's a QR. You know, when you hold your phone up there? QR code as well. Hold it there. up. Scan a it, right? QR there. code. There's a QR wow. code. You just got to put right. your phone right there on the camera. Uh-huh. And then you just type it right there, and it takes you. You don't do the website? You don't do the website? Zoe, because uh-huh. you can do that on your uh-huh. phone. Uh-huh. Okay, go, pull it up on your pull phone. Pull it up on your phone. You go to Zoe Zoe Ministries. Com. Okay, and click on that nice little blue donate button. The button. You just put in it. Or you can go to bishopjordan.com. Yes. And you can always click on the link there. Or maybe they want to call it in. Now you You can call it in as well. We can call it in. Moderators are standing by right now. Call in your seed. Yes, and you can call it in at 888-831-0434. Or the lifeline number. Now, we grew up on that lifeline number. Yes, we did. did. That lifeline number is older than you are. Stop telling at eight. Okay, I'm sorry. sorry. (laughs) 212-316-2177. Again, that's 212-316-2177. Seven, seven. Seven. It's called with some expectation right. because God loves a cheerful giver. Indeed. And our seed is always going before us. That's God right. bless you. And remember that destiny, destiny is not, not left up to chance, chance but, but it's, it's a, a matter, matter of choice. choice. God bless you. Peace. Peace. Introducing the Prophecy Now app. Your prophetic words from the Master Prophet and the Company of Prophets await you in one place. Just sign in or create an account using the email you've already given to the ministry. You'll receive easy access to all of your prophetic words, a daily message from the Master Prophet, a quick option to give your Taruma and or donations, and so much more. Go from giving to living here on the Prophecy Now app. We're outdoors here, as you can see. We'll talk about the millionaire seed. The millionaire seed is how much an hour? $526 an hour. Well, you know, the $526 an hour, um, when you hear the millionaire seed, what do you think about Prophet Reynolds? Think about success, Dr. George. Success? Success. You know... I think about success too, but now we got one caveat, one situation, and that is, are you solving problems Mm. that will pay you $5.26 an hour? What do y'all want to say about that? Well, Dr. Jordan, that's impressive because what you're saying is, if we can, the greater problem that we can solve, the more we can make per hour? Yeah, that creates your value. The amount of problem The problem you can eliminate determines your value in life. And if you are eliminating the same problems everybody else is eliminating, and other people can eliminate that the way you just did it, then you're not most likely not able to make $5.26 an hour unless you're creating the factory that is creating a mass production of the elimination of that problem. Mm. What do you want to say about that, Prophet Joshua? You know, Master Prophet, you are spot on. And what you're talking about is something you've taught us, which is the distinction between being a generalist. Mm. You know, because generalists get paid a certain wage, Master Prophet, or being a specialist. And when you are a specialist, Master Prophet, instead of trading time for money, Master Prophet, you trade wisdom for money. And that is what gets us to the 526 an hour. You know, when you think about the 526 an hour, You've got to ask yourself, what are you a specialist in? Mm. Until you're a specialist, you're not going to be paid. You see, specialists get paid. Generalists get salary. Come on, man. And so you've got to every day ask yourself the question, what am I 
created to do. Now, we talked about this earlier in Malachi. It says, bring you the tithes and the orphans into the storehouse that there might be meat in my house. And prove me now and see if I will not open you the window of heaven and pour you out a, a blessing. blessing. Now, a blessing is singular. Most people think that when you give your tithes and orphans, you're going to be getting a whole bunch of blessings. No. God only gives you a blessing. Mm. Noah only had to build a ark. Mm -hmm. Moses only had to lift up a rod. Mm -hmm. Joseph only had to have a dream. That's right. Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. David only needed a stone, mm -hmm. although he picked up five smooth stones. Now the question is, how have you found your a blessing? Mm -hmm. Because whatever that A blessing is, is going to bring A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z to you. But it all starts with an A. Mm. What would y'all say about this thing about the A blessing? The A blessing can be you become a programmer. Mm -hmm. The A blessing can be that you become a musician. The A blessing can be that you become a prophet, a true prophet. The A blessing can be that you become a designer. And then out of the A blessing comes the multitude of success and blessings that come out of the promise. You see, God gave Abraham a son. A son. The blessing was not in Ishmael, mm. but the blessing was in Isaac. Mm. What do you think now about this a blessing that many people have been avoiding because they've been trying to get all the blessings? You know, Master Prophet, it just reminds me, God keeps returning back to himself. Mm -hmm. You know, the first time when God mentions his name in scripture, he says it as Elohim, Master Prophet, mm -hmm. which is a singular term, but it is a plural ending, Master Prophet. So that a blessing has so much connected with it. It's just like the scripture says that a blessing of the Lord maketh rich, Master Prophet, and it adds no sorrow. So there is a continuum. There is a never ending. It's like a revolving door, Master Prophet, a blessing that show up because of that singular moment, Master Prophet, that God does. So the question is, are you able to find the singular moment, mm. the singular thought, the singular book, the singular design? Maybe this is a blessing of singularity. Ooh. The two become one. The two become one. And out of that one comes a family. The A blessing. Like on the day of Pentecost, they was in one A chord. That's right. And so when we begin to get into that oneness, the blessing is coming out of the one thing that God begins to bring forth. So we look at these trees here. Every one of these trees started with A seed. A seed. And sometimes I think we're trying to grab so much that we forget that God is in the life of a lad, a lad that has a lunch and God picks up the bread and bless it and even the community is saying this is not enough and then he blesses the a blessing and begins to multiply among the people mm. what is your a blessing your 526 seed is connected in your A blessing. Your $526 seed, your $526 an hour is connected in A blessing. Don't miss your A blessing today. So your $526 seed today and find out what the millionaire seed is about to generate for you. God bless you. Peace. Welcome the Taruma Offering app. For us givers, getting organized and staying on track with our contributions has never been easier. Create an account using the email you already use with Zoe Ministries. Yes, you can calculate your salary or you can calculate your benefit. After entering the salary amount or the benefit amount and pressing go, specific amounts will appear 
with the suggested contributions for each category. To view your calculation history reports, tap the word history. To give your Taruma offering or your donation, tap the word give. So what are you waiting for? So turn on your mobile device and visit the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store and download the Taruma app now. Thank you. Praise the Lord. This is Master Prophet E. Bernard Jordan and Bishop Elect. The neighbors heard it. Well, listen, we got an app called the Taruma app. We're going to talk to you about the Taruma app and the $1,000 seed. But um, the Taruma, spell Taruma for the people and pull out your phone so that you can follow us in the Taruma app. Yeah, so people of God family, open up your Google Play Store, your Apple App Store, and type in the search bar Taruma, T-A-R-U-M-A-H. Again, that's T A R. U-M-A-H. Once you see the app come up, go ahead and download it on your various smart devices. Yes, and you know, when we begin to think about the Taruma, the Taruma is 2.5%. That's what it says in rabbinical writings, that they would give the tithe of the tithe. And we begin to have in the Taruma app, when you open it up, it will say welcome, but there's three dots on the bottom that says more. Yeah, and I want you to click on those three dots in the bottom That's it. that says more. And there's a book. There is a book there. And in the book, it has all kinds of information that is free of charge, all about the Taruma. Uh, what would you say about the importance of the Taruma in the life of the believer? You know, Master Prophet, the Taruma is quintessential. You know, just like we need breath in order to live, the Taruma, the first fruits offering, is just as important. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 9 tells us to honor the Lord with our substance and the first fruits. That's the Taruma of all of our increase. So, Master Prophet, the Taruma is a game changer and the Taruma Taruma is quintessential for the believer, Master Prophet, to make sure they had a priest on their payroll. You know, when we begin to look at the Taruma here, the Taruma is a heart offering. And it says that in um, Exodus chapter 25 and verse 2. And that can be elevated. The elevation here is referred to the spiritual expression because of the elevated nature of the gift. Throughout the Pentateuch, Moses is described as going up to commune with God. This suggests that through the gifts that the people of God gives to the ministers, all the Israelites are able to ascend towards the divine. And just think about it, because of your gift that you give to the priest. Now, we know you have the mouth of God and the house of God. Explain the difference between giving to the mouth of God and the house of God. Yes, Master Bible, well, that's the difference between the tithes and the teruma. We know that the Bible talks to us in Malachi chapter 3 and 10 to bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Well, that's the house of God, Master Prophet, that there might be meat in mine house. Uh, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. But Master Prophet, if we go back to verse number 8, it says, uh, uh, will a man rob God? Yet yeah. you have robbed me in tithes and and in offering. That offering, Master Prophet, is the Hebrew word teruma, our first fruits. Yes. And when we begin to start thinking about the teruma, being the first fruit, you don't want to mix the seed. Mm -hmm. And what people have done in churches, they have put the tithe and the offering all together in one. Yeah. And what happens when you have two seeds in the same ground? You know, Master Prophet, it just doesn't work because two things can't exist in the same space. Yeah, and what happens, one becomes a weed because one will choke out the other. I want you today to begin to consider, you may have a church on your resume that you have faithfully given to. That's right. But do you have a priest on your resume? And the priest you have on your resume, think about it. Are you consistent because you need to do the tithe of the tithe? That's right. And the tithe of the tithe goes to the priest. And then the, it sanctifies the tithe to the house of the Lord. So when we get to look at this, you are able to ascend to the divine because of the way you have given unto 
the priest of God. And according to Ezekiel 44, verse 30, the yes. priest does what in, re in the, response? The priest will cause the blessing to rest upon your house, Master Prophet. And when we begin to look at it, I want to know, do you have the blessing resting? If the blessing is not rested, you may have been faithful to your house, to the house of God, but are you unfaithful to the mouth of God? Mm. Now, every time we eat, good. we're partaking of the terum. Mm -hmm. And the terum is not just for the priest, it's for the priest and his family. That's right. So they were supposed to be sustained by what the people gave. And every time you sustain the priest with your gift, God in return sustains you. What do you, what you say about that, Prophet Joshua? You know, Master Prophet, it's so powerful because it's the it's the point that I'm seeing with the mouth of God, Master Prophet. You know, we spoke about in Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 30, that the priest shall command the blessing to rest upon your house. You can't, you see, the blessing has to rest on the house. It has to be commanded from the mouth of the supervising priest. So, you know, I'm excited about this here, Master Prophet, because what it does is it gives us, it allows us to put first things first, Master Prophet, mm. because you have to give to the priest first that the blessing may be commanded. I was reminded, Master Prophet, I believe it's in Genesis chapter 27, where Isaac begins to speak to his son and he says to him, bring me the venison, the meat that I love, that I might bless you. It's almost wow. it's interesting that the blessing cannot happen or cannot be caused if there is not a connection between the mouth and the belly, Master Prophet. Yeah. So are you giving something that satisfies your praise. Mm. If you're not giving something that satisfies your praise, then you're not having the blessing that is for the house. I want you to consider today, are the gifts that you're bringing, do you have a gift that satisfies the priest? And if so, how much money can you be trusted with? I want you to follow the instructions and participate in the Taruma today. Why don't you make this next season of your life to rumor first? Mm, to rumor first. The first of the first. I'm going to get in order because I've been doing it, but I've been doing it kind of halfway. If your name is not in the priest's mouth weekly, then you're missing out on the blessing. Yeah. And the blessing is not resting on your house. But I want to go now to the tithe. The Bible says, bring ye the tithes and the offering. That's right. That there might be meat in my house. That's Prove right. me now and see if I will not open you the window of heaven and pour you out what? A blessing. I want to talk for a moment about a blessing. Oof. Because many people think there's going to be a whole bunch of blessings. It's not about a whole bunch of blessings. It's really about a blessing. God wants to set you up with a blessing. And when you get a blessing, it brings the multiplication into your life. Have you been having an ear to God for the A blessing? Because the A blessing has your wealth to get it. Any man can count the number of seeds that, is, that are in an apple, but only God in you can count the apples that are trapped in the seed. We'll be back to talk with you more about the power of seed. This is Prophet Gregory Clark. And this is Prophetess Cheryl Clark. And we're giving you some updates to make sure that you're with us August 3rd through August 10th for the Relationship Seminar Cruise. Yes and yes. And Dr. Jordan and leading lady Pastor Deborah wants you to be a part. If you're on a relationship, it's not just for married couples, just not for couples. It's for people that want to expand their relationship. So Prophet Clark is going to give you some information that is going to be very, very pregnant for you to be a part. Now, right now at the time of this taping, you still can be a part of the payment plan. That means you have until April 5th that you can get in contact with our group specialist, which happens to be Kirsty Unger at the Norwegian Cruise Line. And these particular rates are now available to you. Now, if you wish for an inside cabin, you're going by yourself, it's going to cost you $1,892.48. That's in the inside place. 
Now, if you want to do double occupancy, you want to save a little coin because now for two people to be in that inside cabin, it's going to be $2,247.86. Now, Ocean View will be $2,075.48 if you're doing single occupancy. If it's two of you in the cabin, the total cost will only be $2,290.86. Then we can upgrade to the balcony cabin. Yes, you have to get a little bit extra space. If it's just one person, it's going to be $3,386.48. If it's double occupancy, that means there's at least two of you in the room, then it goes, that number goes to $3,601.86. And finally, if you decide you wish to have a club balcony suite, which some of you may desire to be in that royalty, that's great. If you're doing it as a single, $3,813.38, or if it's a lavish couple that's going to frolic. Okay, $4,168.76. Yes, and yes. So why don't you go ahead and call our group specialist, and that her name is Christy Unger, and you can reach her at 954-640-1500. Six three four one, and I want you to go ahead and get your cabin today, and let's see you on the wonderful seas of the Norwegian Cruise Line. Hey, this is Prophet Gregory Clark Sr., and this is the great opportunity for you to learn about being a part of the current lesson plan now here's some of the benefits that you receive number one you get the chef's garden box sent to your house so if you're part of the current blessing plan you have healthy choices sent right on your way to you let's not even talk about as you sow your seed as being a part of this current blessing plan the tremendous prophecies that you will receive from the company of prophets on top of that you get to sign up and maybe hang out with me in my particular office on the rebella platform for prophetic coaching and on top of that remember there's a plethora of information that the master prophet gives out because you get at least five books that just only you will receive by being a part of this current blessing plan sign up today be a part and make sure that you are down with us I just want to ask a question right now, and um, the question is, what is the breaking news, Prophet Joshua? <laughs> <laughs> well, the breaking news is an attention getter, Master Prophet. Uh, well, what, what does it sound like? Breaking news! Oh my God! And you know that will definitely get your attention. So, why do you do the breaking news? Well, I do the breaking news, Master Prophet, because there, there, there's so many different words in Hebrew for cry out, cry out um, okay. and unto the Lord. So one of the words for cry out is Shabbat, Master yes. Prophet. And that was interesting because a Shabbat was not like a cry out, like you wanted something from God, but it was a cry out of thanksgiving, a yes. cry out of salute and honor unto the Most High. It was as if the human voice became a shofar, ah, Master so Prophet. Cool. Wow. And so here we do the breaking news every time you do a $1,000 yes. seed or breaking news. All right. And there it is. Why don't you produce the next sound effect? I'm waiting for your seed today. Breaking news. Breaking news. Is this a good time to receive your prophetic word? Well, for the recording, please state your first and last name, your city and state, and also your email address, please. Thank you for that information. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we do bless and praise you for this time in your presence. Praise the Lord. This is Pray Master Prophet Ibn Jordan, and Jordan, and Jesus. we are here at the Episcopal Office Residence. But we have the coaches, the life coaches, the prophetic coaches, the individuals that help you to move from one phase or one season of life to the next. I want to know, are you in touch with your coach or with the body of coaches? If you're not, 
then your future does not look right. But if you are, your future is getting ready to be a lot greater than you've anticipated. Well, I want you to stay with us and come with us into the service because I want you to know that God is about to meet you in a way like you have never been met before. And you are getting ready to hear from the coaches that are not just life coaches, but they are prophetic life coaches for your life. If they're not prophetic, they're pathetic. Peace. And would you say that is the power of prophecy? Amen. We were on live, TBN Live, that was the largest Christian television network on the planet. Neither Bishop Jordan knew we were on live, nor Miles. TBN's phones, I was told, they had more phone calls that night than in the history of the network. And Bishop Jordan changed his prophetic word, changed the energy in the room, changed the message that came forth. It became globally prophetic. I mean, I get almost I'm, I'm emotional thinking about that night just because of what was said to me and what was said to that whole movement, I'm living it now. Well, I've called me here tonight to be eyewitnesses of that which I'm about to bring forth. For yea, this is just the seed. For yea, this is just the beginning. And out of this shall many come forth, saith the Lord, and many movements and many streams, saith the Lord. For even tonight I begin to do a work by my spirit. So the Spirit of the Lord would say unto thee, lift up holy hands in my presence, for I send an anointing for you to go through the decade of the 90s, and I begin to anoint thee to cross over, for the baton is in thy hand. Run with it, run with it, run with it, and let it spread throughout the world, for it is a new day. It is a new beginning, and the charge has been given unto thee, that's the spirit of the living God. prophetic and that is E. Bernard Jordan who is a black man and that is extremely important no more deleting blackness in America America's black prophet of God is E. Bernard Jordan a mighty wind shall blow in the 21st century that will uproot many areas I saw the eternal calendar of time and saw the year 2005. I will cause Michigan to become a heralding trumpet of my changes, saith the Lord. In this place I will touch their water supply, and they will know that I am God. You will see hate groups within the nation that will become very vocal and they will trumpet their opinions of the government and despise the decisions being made. It will be the day of a great crossover. 
I will change the money, and a new currency will surface in the marketplace. Watch the coins. Strange diseases came upon the shores of America, and entire geographical areas were faced with great concerns. I saw diseases and plagues of every kind. Many could be identified, but even those picked up new strains and had to be redefined before they hit the shores of men's lives. Children will start to take vaccinations that are quite different from the vaccinations in the 60s and 80s. I will remove the classroom setting out of the building as you now know them. This will be the time that you will see more people working out of their homes. It will be the season that you will see children sign in and take courses over computer terminals and just appear at certain centers of learning for scoring and testing, saith the Lord. The master prophet is anointed and chosen. Uh, I'd give both words. The Bible says many are called, few are chosen. He is chosen. He's had, uh, in, in the uh, decades that I've been close enough to him to know what he's doing. He's had many offers to do other things he could have done. And he cannot do anything else. He keeps getting pulled back into that. He could pastor a mega church. He could be in entertainment. He could just do private consultations for heads of states. But he keeps getting pulled back into this prophetic ministry. And as he talks for blacks, and the oppressed. He doesn't have to do that. He could leave that alone and be embraced by the so-called mainstream, but he's connected his own stream. That's why I know he's chosen. He cannot run away from the anointing on him. My name is Larry D. Reed, and I'm the host of Larry Reed Live, your most favorite digital entertainment news and talk show that's out here on these social media streets. And what I do is I provide commentary about what is happening in our world, particularly the black community and the black church. Bishop Jordan said to me, after 20 years of pastoring in the box, I went into entertainment. And I said, I'll just use my platform like a pulpit, and I'll pastor people this way. He said to me, he said, mm -mm, no, no, no. He said, you will go back to pastoring. And I looked at him, and I said, hell no. This is what you think. But then when I went to God about it, I understood that I don't have to pastor the way I used to pastor. I can be who I am think the way that I think, do what I do, and there is a people that will follow me as a result. And as a result, I went right back into being somebody's darn pastor. In 1993, David Dinkins, first black mayor of New York, uh, was running for re-election, and he had Reverend Jesse Jackson and I touring churches to campaign for his re-election. And uh, we ended up uh, late one Sunday evening, about a week or two before the election, going by Pilgrim Cathedral in Brooklyn. And uh, Bishop Brown, who was Roy Brown, who was Bishop then, who I'd known since Pilgrim Baptist, he uh, welcomed us, brought us out, place was packed. And uh, Mayor Dinkins uh, made his speech appealing for people to vote for his reelection. Then Reverend Jackson spoke, and then I spoke. And this is 93. Now, you must remember, 93 was right around the uh, time I had finished uh, the Tawana Brawley case, which many people said was a fraud. Uh, I was standing up for the Central Park uh, Five, who were in jail, and everybody thought they were guilty. This is years before they were vindicated. So I'm at the height of a controversy. I just beat a tax case. So, but, but, but because Bishop Brown he was a little boy, no, he didn't care about that. He put all that up because I'd run for the U.S. Senate the year before and two-thirds of blacks statewide had voted for me. Mayor Dinkins felt it was not uh, a political risk to have me work black churches with him and Jesse, and I was Jesse's youth director when I was 13. So I got up and I said what I had to say. And uh, we're getting ready to go. And Bishop Brown said, just a minute, 
I want the prophet to address y'all. And uh, Bishop Jordan got up and came and put his hands up. And I remember uh, Dinkins kind of looked, because Dinkins did not come out of that background. Jesse looked at me, who did come out of the Baptist church and out of the South, and I said, yeah, yeah, he's supposed to be a real prophet. You see, prophecy is ministry on another level. It's like musicians. The reason why songwriters are songwriters is because they hear something other people don't hear. The reason why singers are great singers is because they hear something other people don't hear. And the reason why prophets are so valuable is because they hear something other people don't hear. Because God says you, caught, you brought y'all here today and this seed is releasing a promise. Alvin and Roberta Freeman came to the church during the time when we were sending all the members home. These are people that were givers. And every time they gave, there was a word that was given to them around the seed that they had given. He said, um, I see a house. And we were in the process of getting the house. He says, we know you're getting a house. It's not that house. He says, I see a house with three rooms. And he says, what's going on with you and children? What's going on? I'm getting the number three, and I'm, I want to call them children. What's happening with children in your lives? Give them the mic. I want to find out what's going on here. We, we've been married for three years, and we've wanted to have children, and it just hasn't happened for us All yet. All right. Well, today is your day. During that time, we found out it was difficult to conceive. But the word of prophecy through the company of prophets and myself, we kept seeing children where medical science was seeing nothing. Because God says he, call, he brought y'all here today and this seed is releasing a promise <laughs> that out of these three years of marriage, whatever the situation has been, that block is going to be removed. Because I saw in your home, I saw three bedrooms, but they were children bedrooms. They were two bedrooms for the children. And God is going to grant y'all children. So in, you know, in my feeble mind, it's like, oh, I'll get pregnant three times, you know? And years went by, actually, and no pregnancy, no pregnancy, no pregnancy. And however it manifests, just be open that it's the moving of God that is working in your lives because it's been a prayer and it's a dream that's being answered. Say it's the spirit of the living God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So thinking about that prophecy, he said, don't think of it the way that, that be open to other ways. So we went through IVF and it was three failures and it was our fourth and final try. And we said, well, this is it. Let's, let's go for it. And fourth and final try, they put two eggs back. So we absolutely knew that it's going to be twins. So it was probably about our second sonogram. We knew it was twins, two heartbeats. Second sonogram, the doctor says, huh, that's interesting. No, I get, I get nervous. She says, that's interesting. And I said, what, what, doc, doc what? He said, well, I think you're going to have three instead of two. Are you going to say hi? Yeah. Hey, big boy. Hey, big boy. Hi, big boy. Hi, big boy. So we ended up uh, being told we were going to have triplets. triplets. And just like Master Prophet had said that he saw a house with three bedrooms and three children, we were pregnant with triplets. I didn't know that they were trying to have children. I like to look at it this way. Each time they gave, they were documenting their respect. This is my beautiful family. My wife, Dr. Roberta Freeman. My oldest, Amani Jordan. My middle, Alvin Jeffrey. And my youngest, but most bodacious, Ava Journey.
Not all prophets are the same. Some prophets, they feel it. Some prophets, they see it. Some prophets, they hear a voice in their ear that they must repeat. Some of us get these symbols, these mind movies in our head that we must then make sense to ourselves and then deliver to you the message that you need to hear. The prophets started saying that, you know, you're going to struggle, Mr. Mayor, it's going to be close. I can't see where it's going to go. And everybody was wishing he was going to say he was going to win. He didn't. And he didn't win. And he said to Jesse that uh, you stay strong, you keep carrying the mantle. But then he looked at me and he said that uh, you are going to see greater things than you had ever thought of. All of these controversies, all of these negatives will turn around. I see you in high places. I see you sitting with the highest people. All of this that you've gone through will be over. But Reverend Sharpton, at that time, Tawana Brawley situation, a lot of legal situations going on around him, the Lord said he would raise his voice up in the nation. He said, I see nothing but influence, popularity, sitting in high places, which was outrageous at the time. There was nobody that thought I'd be sitting in high places. People thought that I may get through by the skin of my teeth, and that would be good. We left there that night, and uh, uh, Jesse said, that that was quite a prophecy for you. I said, yeah, and he said, we'll see. And I never forgot that night. The word of the Lord came forth and said that we had to go back to New York City. And uh, we started back meeting at the Dorrell Inn on 49th and Lexington. And um, it was powerful time. We had people from all over, from all walks of life coming in because they heard, there was a whisper, there was a rumor that there was a prophet in New York City. So if you was a Christian, even not, we even had Muslims come to um, get the word of the Lord. And what was so powerful, there was no respect of person. If you wanted to hear what the Spirit of God was saying, then there was an opening, there was an entranceway. And during that time, we had um, Ron. He came in. And uh, when he came in, um, it was a weeknight. He had this huge family Bible. And uh, I mean, loud with the sneakers on and stuff, sitting there. And um, Reverend Ron, what was so unique and amazing, he didn't come trying to hide, trying to get over on the prophet. He was there because he wanted to know what thus said the Lord. I was with the group Run DMC, and I was like many people that stay up late night and are going through things and looking at television. And I turned in the channel, and I saw this young, he was Prophet Jordan. Then at the end of the show, there was a bunch of dates that he was leaving town. Like, I guess he was a traveling prophet at that time. I called and said, is, is the prophet ever going to be there? Because I saw all these dates. I said, no, he's here every Tuesday and Sunday at the Dorrell Inn. Distraught as I was, I got my Bible, and I went down to the Dorrell Inn. The prophet was up doing what he does. There's a nice little audience there. At that time, there was a lot of other um, situations that was happening with him, but he wanted to know what God was saying concerning his life. And like I said, I was in a really bad place, mentally, every way you could think of. And I remember he just he was preaching and stood me up. Young man stand, he prophesied to me. I was blown away by the prophecy. The prophecy hit all the marks and said all the things that I needed to hear at the time and told me of my future. But I remember one of the sermons, I'll always remember this, Life is not easy, let everyone stand. And that just kind of blew me away, like, oh, snap. Well, that clears that up. <laughs> Life's not easy, let everyone stand, is how he ended the sermon. I've seen real prophets, and I've seen fortune tellers. And there's a difference. Fortune teller can read your palm or something like that. 
I've seen people that could really speak truth, but they are rare. Many that came through our church ended up uh, having a moment or either being a fraud. It was something about what the uh, Prophet Jordan said that resonated in me as true. And then as I saw him, I started watching his ministry, started seeing things he would say would come about, read his book, things that a fortune teller couldn't guess. I mean, this man talked about a black president way before Barack Obama went to the U.S. Senate. In this book, in the third volume, the four volumes in one, in this one, and in the third volume, written in 1996. It's on page 66, and it's talking about the first African-American president. In this hour, the day of the Lord will be revealed in a greater measure than that which has been witnessed in centuries gone by. You will see in your day where I shall take a man of color, an African-American, and cause him to win the presidency of the United States. Do not rejoice in this, for he shall be but a puppet dancing on the strings of manipulation, and the African-American community will suffer greatly at the hands of the nation. The, the climate, the country, the way things were going, no way was a black man ever going to be president. Yet, the prophet wrote it. Not only did he speak it, let's, let's go back, but he wrote about it. Who dares to put a word like that in a book that uh, many people are going to read around the world? But he did. And so it was, he's off. You know, he really missed it this time, an African-American. But I tell you, we began to see that word come to pass. However, it was good seeing a whole nigga. Oh, I don't know if I can say that. Although it was very good seeing this black man in this white house. Black man in white house. My God, that was so good to me. We rejoiced to see a black man in office, but we suffered greatly. Until this day, I don't think that we have really measured the trauma that took place and the racism that continue to be fueled as a result of the price of that gift that was given to us. Sometimes I feel like, many of you, I know like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. A long, long way from home. So there are certain things you cannot fabricate and you cannot make up and you can't guess at. Some people call themselves prophets, and they say things and get lucky. This was not lucky. These were things that were embedded. And when it strikes you personally, what he said to me at the height of my controversy, something that I, myself, in my fondest dreams, would not have seen coming. I wouldn't have said that about me. And I promote myself. So that's when you say, this guy has a different kind of gift. A matter of fact, when you said that, a little girl just ran into the picture. Mm, that's my daughter, Missy. And um, I heard her saying, Daddy, something's opening up for you. And that's the word of the Lord. He would come sometime do my syndicated radio show, and he prophesied to people on there. And uh, I got him aside. I said, how do you think Obama's going to do? He said, well, it's going to be very hard for our people. It's going to be very difficult. But you will have access to it. And you should be prepared for that. And uh, I said, wait a minute. You know, you got uh, Reverend Jackson in Chicago. You got his own pastor. They kind of like distance, but they'll make up. I'm always in New Why would I be the one? He says, I'm telling you, you will have access to it. And I became the civil rights 
uh, leader that probably had more access to Obama than anybody. Many times I'd walk in the White House. And I, according to the right wing, I went 102 times while he was president. Many times I'd walk in there for events or meetings, and I'd think about uh, uh, the prophet. I sat up one night that I remember President Obama invited me to a state dinner he had for the president of France. And I'm sitting at the table with uh, uh, the lady over the International Monetary. You know, they sign you the table. So I'm sitting there with the head of the IMF and uh, uh, another uh, chief aide of uh, the president of France. And all I can think about is the prophecy that there's nobody thought I'd be at a state dinner all tuxedoed down. And uh, Obama looked over at and kind of nodded and I nodded. But he didn't know what I was nodding. I was nodding about the prophecy. He was nodding about that he told me he would put me uh, wherever he was uh, in places. Uh, and I never forgot that. I think that part of when you know that a prophecy is real and a prophet is real is that it, it's almost like putting a password in your, uh, your, your computer iPad. It'll always light up. Something will hit your head and bring you right back to that prophecy. I guess that's God's way of reminding you that you didn't do this by yourself now. There was another one that's pretty funny. He told me to travel light. I'm like, we going from Amsterdam to London? How am I going to travel light? I laid in that bed and said, oh, he must have meant lead his weed home. So that word meant just not just only travel light, okay, let me not take a lot of coal, but it meant something else totally different from those that was hearing. And this is another thing which is so powerful with the prophetic. The prophetic is not there to embarrass you. Because I believe that God and his, and his all-knowingness, he could have said, listen, do not take any weed, do not take any drugs. I mean, this is in the church, out open, but God and his infinite wisdom began to share and tell the prophet, tell Ron not to travel heavy, but to travel light. And he and he alone understood that prophetic word. And it saved him. And I think for sure, them dogs was all around everybody's bags. And because I traveled light, I ain't go to jail across seas. That weed was home. Isn't it interesting that the prophet did not say, don't do drugs? He just said, don't take the drugs with you over there in the plane. Now, the reality is that that prophecy is coded, and many times prophecies are coded. This is why I say to people all the time, it takes patient listening. So I decided to bring my brother with me. And I didn't talk about Zoe too much because it was very different. Like I said, I was raised in the Catholic Church. You go, you put your $20 in, stay your 45 minutes, and then you go. So I said to him, why don't you come to church, to church with me? Now, at the time, his girlfriend was pregnant. I wasn't supposed to know. My mother had told me. So we came up to the altar. I brought him up because I wanted him to get a word, and I wanted to expose him because it had blessed me so much. Bishop said, um, do you have a, a daughter? Are, are, are you having a child? He said, no, sweat immediately pouring down his head. OK, now I knew he had a child. He said, well, I just, I'm just, I'm seeing a child. And the child is going to come to the family. It's going to bring the family together. He said, no, he didn't know. So then he gave us additional prophecy saying, you're in education. You're going to be a teacher leader. So he's listening. I'm listening. And I'm, I'm almost laughing because I, I know what Bishop's talking about. So then he says one more time, are you sure? Are you sure? He said, no, Master Prophet. So then we got in the car, we were driving. We're driving home, and uh, he admits to me that he's going he's gonna to have a child. And Master Prophet was right in what he was saying. So that was one of, one of the funnier prophecies. But I'll tell you, coming into a church with someone who has never been there, who Master Prophet has never met, for him to give a, a, a prophecy so accurate, you know, it was amazing. And just reinforces everything I believed from uh, when I started coming. We were in service. And toward the end of the service, the master prophet, as he would, began to hear from God. And he began to just speak things that we didn't necessarily understand. It was a long service that night. Really, I don't even think he was in the room with us. And he kept pacing back and forth across the stage. During that time, I would, I would go out in the spirit, and I could end up prophesying 
10 minutes, one hour. I think he had been ministering to everybody one-on-one. He'd been ministering to people all night. By that time, quite frankly, I was sleepy. I had been there since maybe 6 o'clock in the morning. And I was ready to go home, and I was really, really tired. And, you know, at 1.20, we're saying, oh, God, please, can we go home? Please make him stop. Please, God. And all of a sudden, we heard Bishop begin to prophesy, and he said, 9, 1, 1, just like that. We had heard the prophetic word of 9, 1, 1, but we never connected the dots, you know, and we started giggling between us because we're like, yes, God, we need help. This is an emergency, 911, we need help. We're just joking. And that prophetic word, 911, was very specific. So we we're asking ourselves, is it 911 or time? If it's 911, maybe what year is it connected to? And he just kept saying it over and over. Now, we all know, you know, 911 is an emergency. And so, you know, we were trying to wait and hear the rest of the word, but nothing else came. It was just 911, and he didn't rush through it. He just spoke it and continued to speak 911. And so, you know, people around, you know, looking at one another, trying to, what is 911? What is he saying? And then he got quiet and he stopped. And he said, Well, you'll all find out what that means. 9-11 9-11 happened. That was the following Tuesday. This just in, you were looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot. I understand that a plane has crashed into the Oh my God. Oh my God. See, the prophet is just a vessel. I don't get to be the interpreter, the translator. Sometimes I don't even get a chance to question it. I just say what I hear. One of the things I've learned about Master Prophet, the arch. America's black prophet of God is he likes to talk and he likes to take his time. So it takes patient listening because he's going to go on and he's going to go on and he's going to go on. But everything that he's saying is pertinent information. So it's good to just carry a recorder and then play it over and over because your patience might run out listening to him go on and on and on, over and over and over and over again. I had wrote a prophetic word to a woman about a month prior or so. And her name was Candace. There was a young lady, Candace Young. Uh, she was a friend of my daughter's. She uh, grew up in Philadelphia, and she moved to New York City, and she began to come here for service. She worked at that time at the Waldorf, and she had sold a seed. In her prophetic word, when she sold her seed, her word came to her that she should do no business on 9-11. Well, what had happened is she had um, a already set up appointment Uh, to do some business on one of the towers on September 11th. But that wasn't all. The business that she had to do was in Tower 1 that fell first. She obeyed the written prophecy and says, I'm not going. Why? Prophet told me. So she canceled her 9 a.m. meeting, went to work at the Waldorf Astoria, standing on the roof, of the Waldorf Astoria Hotel looking, saying that's the building I'm supposed to be in. She would have been getting off the elevator about the time that plane hit the building. We didn't realize until we got home, turning on the news, and this is what they was telling us, 911, and then um, Candace said, Bishop, you told me not to do business on 9-11. This was the day. This was the day that I was supposed to be there that early morning for my appointment. And so when she got that prophetic word, she heeded the word and canceled her business appointment that she was supposed to have on 9-1-1, 9-11, and did not show up. And so when she sees the news at about 8.48, whatever the time that first building fell, She knew that that was the word of the Lord because she was supposed to be in that building, yet 
the words of the Lord came and told her, do no business on 9-11. You know what? And the word of the Lord is real. Her obeying the word that she received literally saved her life mm -hmm. because it would have been around that time of when the planes hit the towers. And so for her, it was life saving because she actually obeyed the word that she received. What if she had not obeyed the prophetic word and took her hand up there to that tower? Now, that would have been a whole mess. Well, let's take it a little bit farther. What if she did not sow the seed so that the root word of seed, see, so that the seer could see for her seed? The girl would have been in a whole mess. You better find you a seed and put it in the hands of a seer so you can find out what in the whole hell in the heaven is going on and about to happen in your life. There's always been seers. I think a culture cannot survive without a seer. They cannot survive without a set of eyes. I think if you look at the film industry, let's look at that for a moment. There are people that see things that other people don't see and carry certain images and stories that other people don't see and carry. I think anybody that's in art can have the potential of a seer. I believe they can be musical prophets. They begin to reimagine a world that did not exist. Whether it was James Brown, we personally know that he had a seer that, you know, kind of guided and spoken into his life. People that begin to see a way, uh, navigating a path. I think anyone that becomes a leader, when we begin to look at the former president, Ronald Reagan, he had um, astrologers that were in and out of the White House that was mapping things out. Even it's been documented that Joan Quinbley, who was the Reagan's personal astrologer, that when he got ready to be sworn in as governor, they did it at 12 midnight, and they began to ask why. Well, during that time, Jupiter was rising. And when Jupiter is rising, kings are born. Anybody without a seer or a prophet is running around in the dark without a flashlight. There's dangers that can begin to take place. But to have a seer is to have an advantage. And as I would always say to people, in the land of the blind, the one I man is king. I was watching the master prophet on television and for some time, and then I kind of wondered, because it seemed to be real. I felt the anointing of God, but I wanted to check it out. At that time, he was given a free a prophetic word, and he was going to set the CD and all of this. I said, oh. So I called in because I'm on national television. In fact, we were both on BET at the time. I didn't use my name. I used a fictitious name. And uh, on television, I always used Houston, Texas. When I called in, I, I actually used my real address so I could make sure I, I got the CD. I got that CD, and I'm sitting in the car. I put it in, and I'm listening to this man prophesy to me. He says, I see you going to the mailbox. I see God blessing you through the mail, and you're helping the people through the mail. That's exactly what I was doing uh, in ministry. I just screamed. I said, I'm done. This man is, you know, he going to prophesy to me and get it right and that accurate and, and do it. Uh, I was done. The fictitious name? Who does that? You know, some prophets have to look you eyeball to eyeball and look you up and down and size you up in order for them to prophesy to him. And never seen me, uh, didn't know who I was, but yet. He was able to give me a word. In fact, that's what we were already doing. And then, of course, it got to be even greater because that's what the master prophet said, that it was going to even be greater than what it was at that time. A lot of people are skeptical when it comes to the prophetic, especially the way that the master prophet does it. Give me your name, and then I prophesy to you. So I understand giving him a fictitious name. But the thing is not, this is not a looking at your letters of your name. And there's an art to that, and that is prophetic. But he literally listens to what God says and repeats what God says. And if God said it, then it is always so. I think a prophet is one that can read the times that they're in and the era that they are functioning in. 
and where God want, wants people to be in the, that time period. And sometimes a prophet can give individual messages or collective messages, but God gives certain people certain insight at certain time toward guiding in the flow of where God wants us at the time in history that he's put us on earth for. A prophet of God is a, a man or a woman that God has given them the ability to be able to see into the future and be able to forecast and tell people and give them directions and answers uh, for their life. The prophet comes to comfort the uncomfortable and to make the uncomfortable comforted. Prophets see and they point the way. Now, they may use literature, film, media, music, in order to point to what is in the heart of God or what the heart of the matter is. It is extremely important that we support people that are prophets in film, prophets in media, prophets in literature, prophets that are on Broadway. It's important that we allow prophets to be extraordinary in their expression as they are pointing you to the heart of God or to the heart of the matter. I thought it was the coolest thing I ever saw was, was Bishop. I mean, I knew what was going on. NWA was coming. All these groups were coming out. But I said, first of all, I was changing. I wanted to become a man. You know, the Bible says when you're a kid, you do childish things. When you get older, you transform and you become a man. So for me, looking at Bishop, who was cool, who did all these things that were very filled with integrity, that became my new focus, my new focus. And he never said, Get away, give away my possessions. It wasn't about taking a vow of poverty. So that was pretty cool, too. It was like, all right, wow, prophet just picked up a Benz, you know? Oh, snap, look at the prophet's home. Look at the way the prophet runs his life. This is cool. You know, to me, I'm like, all right, so I'm not here to take a vow of poverty. I'm here to learn about becoming more prosperous than I was as Run DMC. And in the midst of becoming more prosperous, becoming more uh, of a man. I mean, I'd get on the, every single time he'd say, stand, prophesy to lines of people. I'd get a prophecy every single time. So those prophetic words would carry me through the week, through the month, through the years. Okay, this is going to happen. And, you know, you believe the prophet and prosper, 2 Chronicles 20, 20. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, it says, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. But then it says something else. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. Because when you believe the prophet, the prophet is going to show you the most prosperous future of the door you can walk through. This is almost like process theology or process philosophy, that the future is always unfolding, but it's coming through multiple doors. You can either take the scenic route or you can take the direct route. Most people choose the scenic route. The prophet, again, shows you you can either choose this or choose that. The children of Israel coming out of Egypt could have made it to the promised land in 40 days, but they've made it in 40 years. The question is, are you willing to do the work it will take for 40 days, or are you gonna take the 40-year package? We always get a package, choose one. Since this question was raised about um, Second Chronicles, I've heard it a lot, even over the years, um, with the Master Prophet. I think some people shun it because they think it's a manipulative tool uh, in the hands of the immature, perhaps in the hands of those gifted uh, prophetically, but not sanctified for their office, perhaps. He's being a liberator with this. Um, it, it deals with um, Israel going into battle, and it is important to know that um, Israel as a people um, when they had kings and governors and princes and all of this, that the prophets were assigned to kings. They were assigned uh, to governors. They were assigned politically. That's part of that 
righteousness and justice to keep the nation centered. You got to see this Africanly, you know. Uh, the musicians are gathered together, the priests are gathered, and the prophet is there with the leader. And uh, as they begin to uh, call for that prophetic word, here's what comes forth, you know. Um, you know, believe in the Lord. When you look at believe in its Hebrew origin, or as close to it as we can, it means to undergird. It means to support. It, it's kind of like a, a coming together. You see the whole tribal collective nature of it. It's a reciprocity there. I, I, I just saw it. If you would not just believe in terms of what I hear, and okay, I have faith. We know what you believe by the way you behave. So if you believe in the prophet, you're gonna support that prophetic voice, you're going to support, you're gonna undergird, you're going to surround, you're gonna accept. And when they talk about, you know, being established, it's the same Hebrew word. So if you support, undergird, embrace the prophet, so shall you be supported, undergirded, embraced, okay? If you listen and adhere, you'll be established. That word established means to break out, to be pushed forward, almost like literally catapulted or shot into another realm, shot into another dimension. And so prophetically, this is what is supposed to happen. It's not supposed to be, okay, I tell you a word, you believe God, and okay. No, no, no. This is a whole community. This is about a national victory. And so the prophet is tied to regional victories, familial victories, uh, um, generational victories, national victories, international victories. And so there's a reciprocity there. There's a law there that if you would embrace and support and give to, then God will support and raise and give to you. And in that reciprocity, so shall we as a people, individually and collectively, be pushed forward, break out, upgraded, Reset, reestablished. You and I cannot reach the peak of our prosperity or the peak of our performance without a prophet. There is no other biblical leader that prosperity is attached to. If you are a political leader, if you're an entertainer, any creative, any role of leadership, you need a prophet so that you can be at the peak of your performance and reach the peak of your prosperity. I don't know how to do nothing else. I do know how to pray, but, but the Lord also uses me in the prophetic and television, radio, as well as I'm pastoring a church in Opelousas, Louisiana. Uh, the main television network that was the, the most successful for us was BET, and I attracted uh, more centers are non-Christians, I think there's a better way to say it uh, than calling them sinners because I don't know. But I came on right after Uncut, so uh, I, I attracted that audience that was just coming in from the nightclubs, uh, the, the rappers. I met one time, I met Young Jock, and he's cutting back and forth. Pastor Curtin told me, Pastor Curtin, I can't believe it's Pastor Curtin told me. He said, we watch you every time you come on. We, you know, in the studios all throughout the night. That's why I found out rappers don't sleep at night. They sleep during the daytime. He said, so anytime you come on, we shut everything down and we watch you. And every time you holler, go! He, uh, he said, he just got excited. He said, will you, will you say God for me the way you said? I have so many people try to imitate. You know, to be, I, I don't even know where that came from. I don't know how it started. And then after it started, I had so many preachers who say, you can be successful. You can have a great ministry if you just stop all that hollering God. But I become, no, if people don't know my name, the one thing they know, they know that, that scream. Uh, I like to call it more of a holler. Uh, and it's an anointed holler. I love that Kearney Thomas was doing something to get people to wake up that ended up being his signature. We all know him as a result of all that screaming, but he calls it the holy holler. In the church, 
we do and say things that outside of that box is very entertaining. And it can be the thing that God uses through you to get people to listen to you. God! And uh, they say, how many, how, many time, how many people say, you woke me up, I was fast asleep. And then people have to know, why are you howling? It's in the middle of the night. I got to wake you up. I can't come on whispering. That's been normally my reply. But that holler was anointed because how you holler and scream or whatever you want to call it, louder than the volume on somebody's television set. So the volume is set at one level, but the holler comes in even louder than that and able to wake them up. That's God. That's supernatural. So a lot of the rappers rapped about me. J. Cole uh, put me in one of his albums that went platinum. Uh, Drake rapped about me. Uh, we had TV host Jimmy Kimball uh, almost talked about me at least once or twice every, every single week. Uh, he was in interview with Reverend Jesse Jackson. He asked Reverend Jackson, do you know Pastor Kearney Thomas? And uh, he gave that blank look and said, no, I don't know him because he probably didn't know how to answer that. Uh, he said, well, you need to get to know him. He's the best preacher. So I wonder how that made Jesse feel. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what my pastor, Bishop Williams, taught me. He taught me you can't do no more ministry than you got money. And the more money that you have, the broader your scope of influence will be. You have money. You can do great things in ministry. The Bible says a poor man's word is not heard. Anyone in the Bible that word is heard, they are wealthy. Anyone in media that word is heard is wealthy. People are running shock about the people that led Black Lives Matter like they were supposed to be permanently poor. No, we hear their words every day. Their words print money. They are wealthy. When you have the ears of tens of thousands, millions of people, you are wealthy. We were called the Money Church. There were BMWs, Mercedes Benz, there was Rolls Royce, there were trucks, there was... People were wearing fur coats and diamonds and suits and gaiters, thousand dollar shoes. And yeah, this, this is the money church. And, and we do talk about money. And the thing is, is that the people that don't talk about money, they probably don't have any and they probably won't get any. You know, conversations about wealth that we didn't have at our dining room or kitchen tables conversations that were not spoken in our individual households were spoken here at the ministry and that's where the spark happened that's where we got the ideas that we could do so much more with the life that we have that it was literally possible it was tangible you could reach out and touch it I don't know where this whole concept of money being a problem in the African-American community came from. It sounds like it comes from our oppressor that came to Africa and gave you a Bible while they were stealing your gold. And has anybody ever asked a question, how did their gold get under your land? That's the power of the oppressor. They always want you to buy into heaven, but don't buy into the gold that heaven is giving you now. Now, this is the reason why that they killed Bishop Jordan in the media. Because in the spirit of his mentor, Reverend Ike, he began to teach black people about money, which meant that he was bringing liberation people began to see how those around Bishop Jordan, under his teaching, that they began to get houses, land, revenue, wealth, cars, and things, real and personal property. And now there is an issue. Let me tell you something. When black folk start getting money and they start coming up above the scratch line, white folk get bothered. And that was the thing that caused them to kill this black man. Say he a witch. Say that he after your money. Whatever. So folk will stop listening to the liberator. The money. <laughs> Show me the money. <laughs> Let me preface the prosperity 
or the financial side of the ministry with this. I did not go into the ministry to get rich. I got rich doing ministry. It was far beyond me. I never saw the, 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 the wealth. I never saw the money coming. Uh, but because I did real ministry, and I have preachers ask me, did, did you go into ministry to get rich? Or did you get rich? I got rich just purely uh, doing ministry. And when I think about somebody like the master prophet, uh, he had a heart for the people. He wanted to see the people got blessed. So the people give into that and uh, so into it. And today, that's, that's a real problem that's going on uh, with the black preachers that are preaching prosperity. How can you even be a Christian and not preach the message of prosperity? Uh, they've hidden it from us. First of all, Jesus was rich. You know, they want to say that Jesus was poor. And, and I, had, I had an image of Jesus uh, for years of this white boy, straggly beard, straggly long hair, old dirty-looking robe, walking down the street with some old flip-flops on or something. That was my image because that's the picture that they showed us. But when you begin to look at Christ, when he was on earth, he didn't hang out with poor people. He, uh, he hung out with the rich. Uh, Zacchaeus, come on down the tree. I'm going to your house for dinner. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, they were rich people, had big houses. All of his disciples that he, that he called to, to, to walk with him, they were all successful men. Uh, and then somebody, we had a conversation just the other night. Uh, and uh, about which one of the disciples was poor, and everybody jumped on Peter. Peter was poor. Well, he owned his own ship, so he couldn't have been too poor. He, uh, he not only owned his own ship, we, if you look at the fourth chapter of the book of Luke, uh, before the ship experience, we know he had a house because Jesus went to the Simon Peter's house. And then let's say for argument's sake that he was poor. He didn't stay poor long because Jesus told him to launch out in the deep, let down your net for a drought. He caught so much fish that day that his ship began to sink. So that lets us know right there that we should have blessings of God, financial blessings of God overflowing in our life. Jesus chose 12 men. He says it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to be saved. All 12 of his disciples got upset. It says, who then among us can be saved? because all of the disciples of Jesus were wealthy. See, we've got to get out of our mind this Eurocentric character of Jesus as he was poor walking on dusty roads because he couldn't afford sandals. Jesus' garments, they were casting lots for his garments because of the value of his clothing. Jesus had a treasurer that was stealing money and yet Jesus never missed a beat by the name of Judas. And not only that, but they gave large sums of money at his resurrection to tell a lie that he had not risen from the dead. Jesus was a very, very, very wealthy person, probably more wealth than they could actually count. Money is the power of God seeking manifestation. A wealthy black American is what liberation from white, racist, European Christianity looks like. God is glorified when black people are no longer praying about money. The master prophet is extraordinary. That would encompass all of what he is. I got a prophecy hanging over me right this second. He gave me on my birthday that's happening right now, right now. He wrote me on the day before my birthday recently. This is just like November 13th, as I was flying home, he's like, you know, happy birthday, Rev. Here's your yearly prophecy. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm just scared. I'm scared of Bishop. I'm like, why he write me? He's like, he writes me because he loves me still, you know. Like, okay, I gotta carry this prophecy. I can't, you know, can't turn my, it was good. But I was like, I gotta look at it. So what he said, whether I liked it or didn't like it, which I do like it, is all happening right now. I can say that he's been 100% accurate with me and the things that I've heard him say, both collectively, universally, and to me personally. He's never told me anything personally that didn't end up that way. And that's, the power of prophecy.
Born and raised in Brooklyn on these streets Mama said, don't you cry, you got all you need A gift inside to set the people free Friday nights was jammed, and Jordan does not wait for the first prophet or the second one or the third prophet. He gets up, he speaks in tongues, the hush falls over the entire place, that's the order of things, and nails it, hits it right on. Apostle Washington, all of them, and they said, that, that man, he, he, he's very, very gifted. And I said, who, uh, uh, Jordan? She said, yes, he's very, very gifted, but you gotta control him. And at first I thought, oh, he's so excited too. You know, he's excited with us. But then I realized that his face was angry and they were pacing with this anger, which I had not seen his face ever look like that. So you knew, okay, wait a minute, something's wrong. Because they're having discussions about this 19 year old, 20 year old guy in the back room about what he's doing. They're nervous, they're afraid, they're scared. And then Pastor Deborah and Archbishop got to the front, and they were very young at the time. We were just young people, not really understanding why someone, uh, what was going on, or what was driving this. That the one that sees may actually see them. And will he say what he see? And so they may ask them to go to the back door and shake hands with everybody as they left, because that would be the last time we would see them. The pastor stood up signal to the security people to go and get him out of that seat and drag him out of that church. And they left his Bible and chair and the guy came back 
got his Bible, threw his Bible up the aisle, picked the Bible up off the floor, threw it up the aisle again, picked up the floor, and went out the door, threw the Bible out the door. That, they were that angry that they mishandled the Word of God. The pastor told him to go back to Africa. You may be watching and you're very skeptical. I have never had someone to stand in the place of God and utter his words over my life. You need that experience today. So I want to invite you to contact Zoe Ministries that was birthed by America's Black Prophet of God and have that experience and see what you feel. See what happens in your body, what happens in your mind when you begin to hear someone speak for God over your life. Have that experience and do it right now. Look at the QR code, look at the phone number, and contact today. America's Black Prophet is a documentary not to glorify who I am, but America's Black Prophet is really an institution of prophets that really speaks to the issue of social justice, as you will see as this documentary starts to unfold. See, God starts with a word, and that word lands into a man. And then that man takes it to an institution, and the institution becomes a nation. America's Black Prophet is a transformative energy that speaks to the social injustice and lift up the weak and takes them from the low places and sets them on the high places of life. Stay tuned and watch America's Black Prophet start to form within you. Peace. We were on live. TBN Live, that was the largest Christian television network on the planet. Neither Bishop Jordan knew we were on live, nor Miles. TBN's phones, I was told, they had more phone calls that night than in the history of the network. And Bishop Jordan changed his prophetic word, changed the energy in the room, changed the message that came forth. It became globally prophetic. I mean, I get I'm, I'm almost emotional thinking about that night, just because of what was said to me and what was said to that whole movement. I'm living it now. Well, I've all be here tonight to be eyewitnesses of that which I'm about to bring forth. For yea, this is just the seed. For yea, this is just the beginning. And out of this shall many come forth, saith the Lord. And many movements and many streams, saith the Lord. For even tonight I begin to do a work by my spirit. So the spirit of the Lord would say unto thee, lift up holy hands in my presence. For I send an anointing for you to go through the decade of the 90s. And I begin to anointing to cross over for the baton is in thy hands. 
Run with it. Run with it. Run with it. And let it spread throughout the world. For it is a new day. It is a new beginning. And the charge has been given unto thee. Except the spirit of the living God. goodness look at that look at that all right well good morning good morning praise the lord i greet you in the gracious name in the heavenly name of our father our lord our savior jesus christ the king of kings the lord of lords and oh okay and no you do not have to address your screen i am not minister stephen brown but i am elder valina bratton uh trying to sit in that seat and and just steer the helm this morning and i'm just so grateful to god to be here and i want to say welcome one and all share this tell a friend tell a neighbor that the power of prophecy is on right now and it's coming to you and this is going to be an exciting uh fun pack full filled day filled with learning expanding your mind expanding your vision because remember we are leading from the future and we're perfect the eyes so come on sit down make sure you have all your snacks and everything ready so that we can go forth and go higher in the Lord so before we get started I just wanted to say good morning to everyone but before we even go into anything let us just open up with a, a brief word of prayer let's set the atmosphere because great things are happening because today starts the best day of the rest of your life in the name of Jesus so let's go before the throne of grace Gracious and most heavenly Father, we thank and we praise you, God, for coming into this space, this place, this realm, God. Lord, we thank and we praise you for your power, for your resurrection power. We thank you for how you've covered us, God, how you have continued to lead us and you guide us and you, you've kept us through the hard times, God, and you kept us through the easy times, God. You let us know that it was your hand that has guided us. It was your hands that carried us, God. And for, for, we will be forever grateful for you, to you, God, in the name of Jesus, because you are are the one that sits high and looks low. You are ever with us, ever around us, and we're so grateful for your presence. We're so grateful for your love and your covering and your protection, God. Lord, we ask that you uh, cover and you protect Master Prophet, God, and, and Pastor Deborah in the name of Jesus. Cover the company of prophets in the name of Jesus, God, and bless this wonderful service that we are here today, gathered in your name to exalt your name on high, because we are here because we love you. We're not here because we have to be here we get to be here and we're so grateful that we get the opportunity to come together one more time to connect and agree, to touch and agree even if it's through the airways with our fellow company of prophets and fellow believers God we thank and we praise you for this time this space in this place and we'll be forever grateful for your name God we'll be forever grateful for your presence God we'll be forever grateful for your blessings God and in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, the King, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, welcome, 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 welcome. I hope you feel all the warm and fuzzies in your seat right now because I'm sending them out to you. And we're so grateful that you're here. We're so grateful that you thought it not robbery to step by and, and come by uh, the power of prophecy. And we're just grateful for your presence here in Jesus name. So we're going to get this started off right. We're going to put a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We're going to put some seasoning in it. But right now, right now, right now, can y'all say right now? 
All right, I heard you. <laughs> right now, we are going to the magnificent, the excellent. Oh, he gives me chills. El, I'm sorry, the Elder David Brighton. And <laughs> he is also a company. We have a special guest all the way from Albuquerque, New Mexico, Pastor Michael Bryant. And we'll turn it over to them and greet them with a hearty amen and a hand clap of praise. Mm. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. We are so blessed and honored. And we thank God for the opportunity to praise and worship the Lord this morning. So. Uh, just sing along with us where you are. We thank God for our guest this morning. Uh, one of the prophets is in town, and we gl we're so glad that he's here with us. So let's praise God for Pastor Michael Bryan, all the way from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Come on, praise God as he comes. Oh, come on, somebody give God praise. The Bible says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Now, if you know that the Lord is good, come on, turn up the volume on, on whatever that you're watching and take your, take your house shoes off or wherever that you're at and just begin to get up and dance in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is. One more time, say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, yes, he is good. For he is worthy, worthy. For he is good, yes, he is good. For he is worthy, so worthy. Yeah. He is good, yes, he is good. Come on, say, oh, give thanks. Unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is. Come on, oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. He is good. Oh, yes, he yes, is. He is good. For he is worthy. Worthy. For he is good. Oh, he is good. For he So worthy, oh, he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is. time on that guitar.
Clap your hands, give God praise. Mike, what's the other song you want to do? Huh? What's the other song you want to do? Yeah. And the Bible says that the angels gather around the throne and they cry, Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Come on, just, just lift your hands, just go into his presence. Father, we just worship you. Oh, it's an honor to worship at your throne. Is the Lord faithful? Come on. You are faithful. Oh, so faithful. Come on. He'll never leave you. Come on. What a privilege and an honor to worship by your throne, to be called into your presence as your own. Come on and worship him. Hallelujah. Can you say it at your throne? As is your own. Lord, as your own. As your own. We worship you, oh God. We magnify your name. What a privilege and an honor as your own, as your own. Play it one time on a guitar from the top. You are holy. Come on, play it. Here we go.
is your own. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise, everybody. Dr. Valenia, God bless you. God bless. Woo! That was so powerful. I could feel it. I'm just, I, I know you're right there. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. We're going to get the, comp, the lineup of the company of prophets. But you know what? We want to make sure that you get, make sure that you get your seed in the ground, get your taruma, get it up and out so you're just free to just, just to bask in it, to worship. What is that? What was the, what was the, what was the tag of that song, um, Elder, Elder David? What a privilege and an honor. That right there. To bow to what? before your throne. To be called into your presence. As, as your, your own. own. Thank you. Amen. 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 And just by way of order of service, I want the people that are on the lineup to get themselves ready, get up, get yourself camera ready so you can come up to the stage. And this morning, the scripture is going to be done by our uh, Dr. Minister uh, Gregory Clark. Woo! <laughs> we have the prayer by our minister, Barbara Clark. Amen. The worship will be done today by none other than yours truly and Elder David Bratton. And we're just going to ask those that you know you're in the lineup, make your way, and we're going to get ready, and we're going to get ready to get the company, uh, the lineup of the prophets. So, of course, of course, of course, of course, we always start off with our leading lady, our beautiful Pastor Deborah Jordan. So she is always number one on our list. Hallelujah. And it is now open for other class masters. Uh, any class masters? Worthy classmate, Pastor Gloria Jean Kelly. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, classmate. How you doing? I am wonderful, classmate. <laughs> listen, listen. We about about to be about to marching off. About to do that march on what is it? Yes. The <laughs> so we're ready. We're ready. Well, good to hear your voice, and I'm, I'm sure. Are you going to be able to come on camera this morning? Absolutely. All right. All right. So y'all heard it here first. The sniper's coming. So get ready. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any other worthy class masters? Good afternoon. This is worthy class master Maddie Young. How are you? Good morning, worthy class master Maddie Young. How are you doing this fine day? Blessed and highly favored. I'm still in the land of the living. Amen. 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 And I hope my turkey wings are coming in the world. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just putting that out there. All right. Soon, well, I'm soon. so. I'm so glad to hear your voice. It always brings me joy. I'm so grateful for you in Jesus' name. Okay, so we have uh, Pastor Deborah, uh, Elder Gloria Jean Kelly, and we have uh, Archdeacon S. Um, Maddie Young, and any other worthy class masters? Good afternoon, worthy class master Cynthia Clark, and good afternoon, Elder Valina. Good afternoon. How are you? I am wonderful, wonderful. Writing, I know you're writing the music. I, you know, mm -hmm, you know, sure am doing it, right, doing it in the background. <laughs> Listen, I, I can't wait to, to be able to go to iTunes and just upload or whatever the platforms you're going to have it because I know it's going to be amazing. And I'm you're such an amazing, gifted writer and song I don't want to say songbird, but yeah, you, 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 you your voice. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you beautiful, so much. Beautiful, I beautiful, appreciate beautiful, it. Beautiful. Yes, you were in the church doing some things with me back in the day. Thank you. <sighs> that was fun. That was, that was fun. That was fun. Switching parts. Because sometimes yeah, I have sometimes, notes yeah. I had on. Sometimes I go to tenor. <laughs> it was just fun. It was just fun. It was fun. Yes. Good to hear your voice. Yes. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Are there any other worthy class masters? Okay. So we will move on to the leaders of the Temple Seers. Good afternoon, Elder Valina. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you doing? I am blessed and grateful, and I'm Prophet Nichelle Barron, and I'll be here until 2.30 p.m. today. Okay, Prophet, Prophetess Nichelle Barron will be here. Let me spell that name right, because uh, till 2.30 today. Amen. Well, I hope you have a glorious day. I hope everything is all in order, and it's so good to hear your voice. You Amen. as well. Peace and blessings. Amen. Amen. Uh, do we have any other temple seers, leaders of the temple seers? Okay, we will move on. We will say uh, the floor is now open for temple seers. Prophet I Alexander Gray. 
And somebody else? It is Diamond King. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Prophetess Diamond King. How are you? Great and great. And you? Listen, I'm on fire. <laughs> but it's great. I'm great. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's good to hear your voice. Good to hear your voice. Okay. So uh, any other temple seers? Prophet Gregory Clark, I'll be here until 2.30 p.m. Doctor's in the house. Doctor Gregory Clark. Until 2.30? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and what about the other doctor in the house? Couldn't get off mute. This prophet is Cheryl Asso. Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. So good to hear your voice. Amen. Same to you, Elder. Looking nice. Listen, I'm trying to hold together. <laughs> okay. And y'all both here to 2.30. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, so we are now at uh, number nine. We just had number eight and number nine. And now we need number 10, other temple seers. I don't know why you think that's Come on happen. now. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, I'm going to need a second to recover. Okay. Grace and peace, Bishop Elect. No, don't do it now. <laughs> that, was, that was not good. Oh my gosh, that was hard. Okay. I'm glad I didn't fall on the floor. Okay, he is number 10. Number 10. All right, now we're at number 11. Any other Temple Seers? Okay, let's go to leaders of the Temple Guards. Temple Guard Cynthia Dawson, good afternoon. Good afternoon, how are you? I am doing well, and how are you? Listen, I am blessed and highly favored. I'm grateful to God to be here on the land of the living. Everything's working. I'm like, listen, let's do this thing, right? Right? Amen. So, so it's so That's good great. to hear your voice. It was so good to see you on... Uh, the what was it? The seven last cries, or well, the seven last words? <laughs> good yes, God, listen, 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 listen. It was all good. <laughs> Legs is over here heckling me, y'all. Uh, so I'm, I'm in a I'm in a sandwich situation. I have uh, Prophet Legs over here heckling me, and I have Bishop Lot giving all giving me all that energy. So, <laughs> Amen, Amen. So Amen. that you are number eleven. So uh, any other? Um, Leaders of the Temple Guards. Good afternoon, Elder Felina. This is our Prophet Evelyn Lily. Good to see you. Hey, I wish I could see you. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Enjoying the weather. Isn't it lovely? But it's misleading because it's pretty outside, but it's kind of chilly. So I'm still wearing a winter coat because oh. I, I can't get sick. Well, it's going to be 80 over here in Virginia. Now, where are you located? At DMV in Woodbridge, Virginia. Oh, so you're warm. Yes, it's cold yeah, up here. A little bit warmer. <laughs> nah, it, 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 it's, it's what we call brisk. It almost feels like fall, right? It feels almost like it's October, you know? You know? All right. Thank you so much. You are number 12. And so now we will go Thank to you. Temple Guards. Prophet Good afternoon. Barbara. This is Prophetess Barbara Tucker. God bless you, Elder Belina, and the Company you. of Prophets. Amen, amen, amen. So good to hear your voice. Are you on this side of the hemisphere or the globe? Yes, I am. I'm at home in Atlanta, and I'll be here till 3 o'clock. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> amen. I have you down, uh, Prophetess Barbara Tucker, and you yes. down at 3 o'clock. You are number 13 because our very own Minister Barbara Clark is number, you're number 14. She's number 13. Amen. Oh, okay. Amen. Okay. Amen. Number 15. We are still looking for temple guards. Temple guards. Oh, let me put my name down. Valina Bratton. I'm number 15. Number 16 is Elder David Bratton. Okay. Now we're opening up for number 17. Any other temple guards out there? Blessings. God bless you. This is Prophet Nikea Brown. Hey. How are you, Elder? How you doing, Doctor? 
<laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you. And yourself. Listen, we're doing this thing. We're doing this all thing. Right. You know? Yes, we right. are. You done persevered. You done did all the papers. You done did all that. And, and now here comes the fruit. Look, look <laughs> for the fruit. And not just fruit, much fruit. So that's a blessing. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Yes, it is. Thank okay. You. you are number 17. Okay? Received. Okay. And now we are going to number 18. Any other temple guards? Prophet William Richards. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Prophet William Richards. How are you doing? Great and thankful than yourself. I, I, I'm doing great, but I, I just thought about what's the weather like where you are? Well, over here is 84 degrees. I'm leaving. Goodbye. <laughs> Wow, that's so nice. That's so nice. I wish I was there. Ooh, I'd be it's a on. Caribbean flavor. It's a Caribbean flavor. Say that again. The Caribbean flavor. Caribbean flavor. Oh, yes. Caribbean flavor. Yes, the Caribbean flavor. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I love every, all of it. All of it. I love the weather. I love the food. love the people. I would, if, if it were me, I would be, I would have my own private signal and I would just have my feet in the sand. Amen. You are number 18. Uh, and we are going to open it up to everyone. And right now we're going to do initiates and neophytes. Elder Valina. Yes. This is Prophetess Barbara. I just wanted to let you know in Atlanta, it's 83 degrees. So you can come visit me too. Yes. Well, listen, listen, I'm not discriminatory. I love it all. I love the hot weather. Now, cold weather, mm, I'll do it, but you know, because I live in it. But yeah, Atlanta's 80, 84 degrees, you said? 83. 83. Wow. That's nice. That's when you go out in like a little sundress and you're not going to get a cold. You're not going to get sick. It's just beautiful. Yeah. It's just beautiful. Wow. Well, it's not good to be jealous, but I am. <laughs> I love that weather. I love that kind of weather. Amen. Amen. So we're opening up for initiates and neophytes. We're at number 19. Prophet Clarence Cunning. Say that again. Prophet Clarence Cunning. Praise the Lord. How are you? God bless you, Prophet Clarence Cunning. How are you? I am great and looking forward to May. Yes. <laughs> I know you are. Amen. Amen. All of us, all of us. I'm looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to May, and I'm looking forward to June, so I can say bye to teaching. <laughs> so it's a blessing. It's a blessing. You are number nineteen. Amen. Now, who is going to be the blessed number twenty? Prophetess Cassandra, Elder Valina Bratton. Uh, Prophetess Cassandra Prophet Seals. Yep. Good evening, and good evening. Oh, good afternoon, I should say, Elder David Bratton as well. Amen. You are number 20. Thank you so very much. All right. So everybody give your give give your temperature oh, check um, in. What's the temperature where you are? Elder Valina, it is 77 degrees currently here in Hilton Head Island. And I am going to be leaving at two and returning back at four. Prophetess Cassandra Shields. Thank you. Okay, leaving at two, returning at four. Okay. You are number 20. Amen. And I thought I heard another voice along with yours, but I didn't get the name. Yes, Prophetess Dr. Grace Asquith. Amen. Praise the Lord, Dr. Grace, Prophetess Dr. Grace Asquith. How are you doing? I am doing well. Thank you for asking. And how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing all these temperatures and I still have a winter coat. So there's that. Oh, but Amen. I'm, I'm going to act sunny. 74 degrees here where I am. Oh, rub it in, rub it in, rub it in, rub it in. That ain't right. <laughs> amen, amen. Okay, and so I'll you, be here until 2 p.m. Okay, till 2 p.m. Okay, you are number 21, 21. Thank you so much. Are there any other uh, initiates? The floor is open to all areas and all categories. Prophetess Reagan Fouch, good afternoon. Amen, amen. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Prophetess Reagan Fouch. Oh, how you doing, Pro Prophetess Reagan Fouch? How you doing? I'm well. How are you today? Good, 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 good. Good to hear your voice. Good to hear your voice. Okay. Amen. Temperature check? I'm <laughs> just kidding. It's actually 78 degrees here in Powder Springs, Georgia. <laughs> okay, no more temperature check. Okay, you are number 22. You are number 22. 
Are there anyone else that needs to add their name to the list? Prophet Bessie Adams. Prophet Bessie Adams. Oh, God. A L L E N. See? Thank you so much. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great and great. You know, just trying to, I'm, I'm taking in these rays of sun from all the parts of the world. You know, Zoe is worldwide and we're just so grateful for that. And I want you to know that you are number 23. Number 24. Amen. Amen. Num any, uh, who, who's going to be number 24? Good afternoon, Prophet Juana Mori. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good afternoon, Prophet Juana Mori. How are you doing? Great. Thank you. And it is 75 degrees in Murrillville, Indiana. Even in the middle. <laughs> All right. Amen. Amen. And number 25. Good afternoon, Elder Valina. This is Prophetess Denise Chen. Amen. How are you doing, Prophetess Denise Chen? I am doing wonderful. Thank you so much for asking. Amen. 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 You are number 25. 26. Y'all know I'm not Prophet Stephen Brown. I'm doing it. <laughs> Good afternoon, Prophetess Tiffany McCoy. Amen. God bless you, Prophet Tiffany McCoy. How are you doing? I'm well, Prophetess Elder Elena. Thank you. All right. Okay. It's, it's early where you are. You are number 26. You said what? Is it Earl? Are you in Eastern time? Eastern time zone? Yes, I am. I am. Yeah. Eastern standard. Okay. Eastern standard. Stuff, yeah. All right. Well, you are number 26. Okay. So I should go through the list right now and just read off the names. And um, if anybody else. Hmm. Yes, number 27, directives from the desk. <laughs> the floor is open for initiatives, for neophytes, for temple seat, everybody. Amen. I'm Stephen Bostic. Oh, see, he, he felt that in his spirit. <laughs> How you doing, Prophet Stephen Bostic? How you doing? Very well, How you doing? Amen. Great, great. We are just chugging away here. You are number 26. You are 27. Yeah? Thank you. 27. <laughs> Listen, I'm doing my Duolingo. Um, I have a 43-day streak, so I got to practice. Practica. All right. Number, amen. You are number 27. And who would be number 20? Great. Number 28. Eddie Allen. Eddie Allen? Amen. How are you doing, Prophet Eddie Allen? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Listen, I'm trying to hear. All right. <laughs> so let me let me give a disclaimer. If I'm saying because the hearing is not, you know, ever since y'all have broke the news so many times, my hearing is not the same. It's not the same. So here we go. You are number 28. Prophet Eddie Allen. It's so good to hear your voice. Who would be 29? Okay. So we're going to take that as a pause for a moment. Maybe they're gathering themselves. Maybe they're getting a beverage. And that's okay. Maybe, maybe they're getting their seed in the ground. And that's a great thing. So we'll take that as my headband is keep slipping off my head. We are so grateful that all of you are here. We are so grateful that you have given your name in on the list. And I'm going to go through this list. And uh, I have my company right here to help me out just in case I uh, trip. All right, so we're going to start off, of course, of course, of course, with our worthy class master, uh, Pastor Deborah Jordan. She is number one. Elder Gloria Jean Kelly, she is number two. Uh, uh, Prophetess Maddie Young, she is number three. Uh, worthy class master, is, uh, Cynthia Clark is number four. Uh, Prophetess Nichelle Berrien, she is number five, and she's leaving at 2.30. Uh, Prophet uh, Elder Alexander Gray uh, is number six, uh, Prophet Diamond King. She is number seven, 
uh, Dr. Gregory Clark. He is number eight, and he's leaving at 2.30, followed by Dr. Prophetess Cheryl Clark. She is number nine, and she's also leaving at 2.30. We have Bishop me luck. He is number 10. <laughs> it's going to be that kind of day, y'all. <laughs> number 10, uh, we have Prophetess Cynthia Dawson. She is number 11. Uh, Prophetess Ellen, El Evelyn Lilly, she is number 12. Uh, Prophetess Barbara Clark, she is number 13. Uh, Prophetess Barbara Tucker, she is number 14, and she is leaving at 3 o'clock. Yours truly, uh, number 15, Elder David Bratton, he is number 16. Uh, Prophetess Dr. Nikea Brown, she is number 17. Uh, Prophet William Richards, he is number 18. Uh, Prophet Clarence Cuddy, he is number 19. Uh, Cassandra Shields is leaving at 2. Prophetess Cassandra Shields is leaving at 2, but she's returning at 4. And you are number 20. Uh, Prophetess Grace Asquith, she is staying here till 2, uh, 2 p.m. And you are number 21. 22 is Prophet Reagan Fouch. Pro uh, number 23 is Prophet Bessie Allen. Uh, Prophet number 24 is Prophet uh, Juana More. Uh, Prophet number 25, you're number 24. 25 is Prophet Denise Shen. Number 26 is Prophet Tiffany McCoy. Number 27 is Prophet Stephen Bostic. And number 28 is Prophet Eddie Allen. Mm -hmm. And that is the list. Is there any other names? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Did I miss anyone? I didn't know we, okay, we're dealing with uh, breaking news ears. If you could speak a little louder. Say that again. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Prophet Pamela Allen. How are you doing? Okay, well, you're number, you're number 29, and we'll pray all is well and abundantly well and awesome and excellent. Amen. You are 29. Right. Amen. And, and, and I feel like we are complete. And if you want to put your name in on the list, you know, you know how to do it. And we're so grateful for all of you that have come in here. And uh, you don't think that there's one more Elder Valina to, to level us out to, to just the 30? I think I think you have definitely had that kind of. Uh, I wonder. I wonder if there's one more prophet, Elder Valina, that's there, they're trying to come on in they're and trying saying, to, "Wait a second, I, Elder Valina, I'm getting in. My my computer is it's slow. Yeah, they, they're they're <laughs> running through the. They're running from the uh, from the welcome center. Wait, wait, stop the presses. Stop the presses. Okay, would there be one? There's room. There's, there's room. room. There's room. There's room. There's room. Who would be thirty? <laughs> Who would be number thirty? Amen, amen, amen. All right. Well, I wonder, Elder Valina, you may have been on to something. They may be coming on in and letting us know a little later. So Yeah, they might. All right. Well, we bless the Lord. Amen. All right. Well, let's go ahead, family. We want to get ready for our order of service. Amen. At this time. So, um, Elder Valina, who do we have coming up? Amen. I believe we have coming up uh, Prophet Dr. Gregory Clark. He is doing. Yes. Yes. He's first up. He's first up. First up. Okay. So doing the scripture is Minister Gregory Clark. Doing the uh, prayer is Minister Barbara Clark. And the worship will be done by yours truly and Elder David Bratton. Bishop elect. All right. Thank you. Take us away, Dr. Clark. Amen. Great people of God. Great people of God. It is a pleasure to be with you. And today I'll be reading Psalms 1 in its entirety, and I'm coming out of the NRSB version. Amen. Let us go forth. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season. 
and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like shape that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregations of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. The way of the wicked will perish. It has been a reading of the word. Send it back to the sacred desk. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Father God, we do thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your goodness. For this is the day that you've made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. And we say thank you. Thank you for another opportunity that you've allowed us to see this day from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Your name is worthy to be praised. And we give you glory and we give you honor on today. Here at Zoe Ministries and across the world, we say thank you. Those that are watching and tuning in on Facebook, Instagram, here in Verbella, Lord God, we just ask your blessings Amen. upon the people of God as they gather. We've entered into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. We are thankful and we bless your holy name. Father God, we thank you for our leaders, our Dr. E. Bernard Jordan, our leading lady, Pastor Deborah Jordan. We thank you, Father, for the company of prophets for our bishop elect Joshua Jordan and his family and each and every family represented here on today. We say thank you, Father, for another opportunity just to lift up your holy and matchless name. And as we come together from far and near, we thank you, Father, for your anointing that will go forth from the north, south, east, and west and bless us. Father God, we thank you because of you, we live, we move, and we have our being. We thank you that we are one with you and your spirit resides on the inside, working on the outside. And there is a work that's going to be done on today. We thank you for your word that shall go forth with power and anointing. Father God, give us ears to hear and a heart to receive on today. Father God, we even pray for our children. We pray for they, that they go in and out, that you protect them, that you encamp your angels around about the children and the families, every partner connected here at Zoe Ministries. We say thank you, Father. Have your way, even as so seeds are being sown into the ground. Father, we thank you because this is good ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the seed of your word, we thank you. And we give you glory, honor, and praise for all that shall be accomplished on today. We thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for those that will say and cry out, what shall I do to be saved? There is an answer on today. Hallelujah. And we just thank you, Father God, for all of your manifold blessings. We just give you glory and honor and praise on today. Amen and ashe. Amen. So what time is it? Uh, what You got to turn your mic on. Let's turn your mic on time. But while he's doing that, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's worship time, Elder Brad. Fix your face. <laughs> it's okay. You so sorry, I got you. I got you. I'm supporting. Uh, uh, I got you. I got here you. Here we go. Okay. I'm all under the bus. No, you're not. I'm right there with you. Right there. I got the wheels on my back. <laughs> What time is it? It is worship time. There we go. There, there we go. go. <laughs> Amen. There, there is nothing like a... So uh, I started looking up the word worship. It comes, it, and uh, it comes from, there's an old English word, and it means worthiness or meritoriousness and thus giving God the recognition he deserves. Uh -huh. So the whole purpose of worship is to give God the honor and the recognition for all that he's done, right? And the Bible, in the first example of worship, was a sacrifice, right? That was Abraham said, uh, the son, uh, he said, well, the, boy, the lad and I will go yonder to worship, mm -hmm. right? And he was going to offer him as a sacrifice. Right. So understanding that the sacrifice is not just you know, just words that come out of your mouth, but there should be a sacrifice or something of substance. And then a, a, another scripture says, honor the Lord with your substance. 
right? Mm -hmm. So you have to actively bring something and you have to bring something that you love. So the resources that you have that you love, you give God what you love. You mm -hmm. give God the things that you depend on and then you give him, first of all, what belongs to him first because you're not, you're not giving him uh, something that he doesn't already own. Right. Because if you understand the Bible, the first 10% of everything belongs to the Lord. And then there's the ever powerful and present truma, mm -hmm. which is uh, the hinge that opens the door. Yes. So go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Well, the. <laughs> It's so crazy. All right. Well, yeah, you, you're absolutely a thousand percent correct. And, you know, while you was talking, I was, you know, just, just thinking about the, the truma and thinking about what in our body is like the truma. So, you know, I love how Master Prophet has guided us to this chat GPT because I went to the chat GPT hey, and I asked what what organ is 2.5 percent of the body? Oh, and good. yeah, wasn't that good? And it said the liver. Wow. The liver is approximately, how you like that? Hey, that hey. Good. I've been around Elder Kelly. 2.5% uh, of the body. And so I asked for the etymology of the word liver. Mm -hmm. And it says the word liver originates from the old English word is lifery or lifer, which has its roots in uh, Proto-Germanic, -German, Germanic, say it. I know you got it. All right. Which means um, meaning to adhere, to stick, to smear, which all, and, and life, if you think about it. And so I asked, what are the functions? What are the functions of the liver? Well, it sets your metabolism. It, cre it helps with detoxif detoxification. It uh, helps with bile production, mean, meaning it gets all the waste and stuff out of your body. Uh, it also... Uh, has storage of your vitamins or minerals and other nutrients and it also has an immune function which means it filters out bacteria viruses and pathogens from the bloodstream and i would put to you that the taruma does the same thing oh that's good I like the that. taruma does the same thing it is there to uh it helps your metabolism it helps you to move quickly and not just running like a hamster on a wheel but moving with purpose and burning up only what's necessary to be burned up in terms of caloric intake but uh being productive it also helps with detox detoxification mm -hmm. and getting out the things that is not good for you the things that are of toxic toxicity what's my, my, my toxicity mouth thank you sir all right and it also helps with bile production which means it absorbs all the fats and things and gets those things up and out of you it pushes it to the intestines hello and it also uh, is a filter to get away bacteria and pathogens from the bloodstream. And it also helps with, um, with your vitamins. So having your liver or your liver uh, in order is like having your taruma in order. It is something that will keep you uh, going regularly. You don't want to have a liver problem. And, and for those people out there that do, you know, that they know... Uh, the repercussions of the of that organ not working and it's only 2.5 percent of the body but wow what could it knock you out, out of whack yeah. when that thing is not working the way it's supposed to work so getting your taruma in the ground and getting your taruma up to your supervising priest that's like extremely important you need the uh, so when the blessing is commanded over your household mm -hmm. you need that to happen blessing on top of blessing on top of blessing because it is multiplying the protection that is covering your house. Absolutely. And it covers everything that is under your under your roof or under your connection. And so, you know, the 2.5% is, is, once again, it's not the amount, it is the execution of the principle and keeping that principle because the principles of God are irrefutable in the Bible. Absolutely. The Bible. So... You know, and it's the first of the first. So there's sequence and order. Because, um, you know, you never want to give God what's left. Right. Right? Because that means everything before that didn't have 
uh, a direction and a purpose that it was designed to have. Mm -hmm. But when you give God the first, everything else that you have left, God allows it to go way further than it would have gone and be more effective okay. than it ever would have been. So uh, we want to, uh, let's give them the ways to give. Amen, that? amen, amen. And the ways to give, well, first we want to make sure that they know that if you are, we're looking for, of, of course, the worshipers to give the $1,000. Uh, and I and believe we're looking for like, right. well, and the, we're looking for 12 and amen and, and more. Hello, hallelujah. And more. And more. And uh, we also don't forget the $2,024 seed, 24-24-24 seed to get that into the ground. And if you can't do that, then we ask that you stretch and you reach for the $224.24 seed. But the Taruma, as Elder David asked, was you can do it through Zelle and through PayPal at Bishop Jordan at zoeministries.com. Through Zelle and through PayPal at Bishop Jordan, Bishop Jordan at ZoeMinistries.com. That's correct. Or you can go through the Venmo and do Bernard hyphen dash Jordan. What am I doing? You're, you're saying a lot. <laughs> I'm, saying, you're doing a lot. I'm so sorry. Through Venmo because I don't want anybody to be confused. So the Venmo, the Venmo is Bernard. Dash Jordan dash four. Thank you so much, sir. And Cash App, and it's the best Cash App that has ever been made. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah has been uh, my dollar sign, my Archbishop. And accept no imitations, okay? Y'all, y'all know the spell. Spell it all the way out. Spell it all the way out. No abbreviations, no hesitations, okay? Or you can do through dollar sign Prophet is Deborah. That's D E B R A. And those are the ways that you can give through. Cash App. Um, and if you don't have uh, any apps, you can call in and the Partner Care Line. And we're asking that you just give them a minimum of $10 seed because, you know, it's a processing thing, Correct. you know? Amen. Amen. And you can also, to get your worship in the ground, you can do text to give at uh, text the word my worship, which is one word, at 833 450 4245. That's 833-450-4245. Or you can visit uh, the website and go to Zoe Ministries or bishopjordan.com. You can go to zoeministries.com, bishopjordan.com, or you can call the Partner Care Line at 1-888-831-0434. That's 888-831-0434. And if you don't have any of those things, you can hold up your cell phone mm -hmm. and put it to... QR code. The QR code, which is right here, and it will something will pop up, and you just tap on that, and you can just follow the steps. So this is easy peasy, lemon sneezy. Anybody can do it. There are multiple ways to give, and we're excited about the testimonies. And what I loved about what you said, Elder David, is that since we've been doing this to Ruma, our lives have completely changed. Absolutely. It was the liver. Right. It was the liver because we was doing the we was doing tithes. We was doing the offering, but our liver was enlivened. Our liver wasn't livering. <laughs> how about this? Our liver wasn't delivering. <laughs> okay, I got to be stopped. Very good. Go ahead, Elder. <laughs> so, hey, man, uh, we're going to turn it back over to Bishop Elect. God bless you, sir. Amen, hey, man. Thank you so much, Elder Bratton and Elder Belina. And without any further ado, family, let's continue to give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise as we bring to the screen none other than our Archbishop. <laughs> Our Dr. E. Bernard Jordan, America's Black Prophet of God, Dr. E. Bernard Jordan. How you doing, Master Prophet? Can you hear me loud and clear? We can yes. hear you loud and clear. Well, God bless you. Well, we're here in Las Vegas at the NAB conference. As you can see, I have my name tag. Mm. And I'm here at the NAB show. And we're looking at where is, you know, we take on, we are leading from the future and what leading from the future looks like. So Obed James and I are here and we're going to look at some technology and um, Legs will be joining us this evening. How you doing, Legs? I'm doing well, Master Prophet. Are you all packed up? Yes, sir. Well, listen here, there, um, this, you'll be doing a lot of walking. Yeah. You know, it's about it's about 
four football fields. That's all right. That's what we practice for. <laughs> it's good. It's, it's wall to wall exhibit. So um, the exhibit thing opens up at 10, which is uh, which it does open up eight minutes ago. We were here early this morning, got regist registered, and Obed James is here and um, right now on his computer. And we have um, Noah as the chief engineer of video today. So we're going to see how well he does today on his own. I see he's sitting behind, <laughs> he's sitting behind you. And um, Legs, you get to see all of these godsons, all these young men that started out like you did as a teenager, uh, wrapping cables, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, if you can get your young, your sons or your daughters around experts that have integrity, they can grow them and sometimes touch their palate and probably be the, give them the tool that would cause them to get their first house and have a quality life. Amen. Amen. Um, I enjoyed what Prophetess Valina was sharing today. So I went to my AI assistant and looked up, you know, what organ was 2.5% of the body and it did say the liver. So I was um, fact checking because I was becoming like the Berean as all of you should do. And I'm sure many of you went to your devices. Um, did you get a chance to look at that prophet, Bishop Elect? Did you have a chance to do that search? Yes, and yes, Master Prophet. And it's kind of amazing that out of all of the organs of the body, you know, the liver in a lot of ways was considered to be as the heart. And you may say, well, how did you come up with that? Because the liver is where all the emotions reside. The emotions don't reside in here where the heart beats, but in the liver. And that's why a lot of times when people are alcoholics or, you know, or doing drugs or whatever, um, it sometimes it becomes an emotional situation that they're trying to drown out a world that they're emotional about. And it doesn't really attack the heart as much as it toxifies the liver. So we can begin to get a lot of wisdom from that. And the question would be, have you allowed the 2.5% to become a detoxifying agent of the soul? And could it be that when the Bible says that when you bring your tithes and the offerings, you will rebuke the devourer for your sake? Um, when the liver is not healthy, it slows down the metabolism, which means it slows down the breakdown of the way food is digested. And sometimes many of us are not digesting life because our seed or our giving is not correct. And so we can get a lot of, of uh, a world out of what was just shared. And thanks for bringing that information that out of all the organs, because when she asked which organ, I thought right away the brain, because the brain was only three pounds, you know, it's only about three pounds. But it seems as though that the size of a person's liver must be moved in accordance with the size of a person's body. But to move forward, that became such a powerful moment to begin to consider that because now I am looking at the health of my giving, which is the health of my liver, which is the health of my living. And if I am not giving, I am not living. I want everybody to type that in right now. If I am not giving, I am not living. Anybody want to say anything in reference to that? Yes, and yes, Dr. Jordan. I thought that this is absolutely amazing. I looked it up as well, and I found out that the liver is one of the largest and also the heaviest organs in the body mass profit. And so I thought about how heavy and large our teruma or our seed is, Master Prophet. Though it looks like something that is small, Master Prophet, or insignificant, you shared something on Friday, Master Prophet, that truly blessed us, where you shared that my there's a forest 
that is wrapped up in our seed, Master Prophet. And so there's so much more that's wrapped up in it if I can just get that it leaves my hand, but it never leaves my life, Master Prophet. Well, Prophet Joshua, if we get it, if Prophet Stephen there or the Prophet Deborah there can get it in this verse of scripture in the ESV standard, the English Standard Version, Lamentations chapter 2, verse 11. Yes, and yes, Prophetess Amen. Deborah is here, and she's getting it now, uh, Master Prophet. Make sure she had her. Make sure she had her tea before she started. She, she has tea. Master Prophet. See, see her. She has her tea right there, Master Prophet. Come on here. <laughs> All right, the lamentations. My computer is stuck. Okay, go ahead, Prophetess Barbara. Does Barbara have it? Providence Barbara, you have she but look, what was the scripture again? Lamentations. Oh, Lamentations chapter two, verse eleven. Lamentations chapter two, verse eleven out of the ESV. The ESV. Mm -hmm. Your cheap your, your chat GPT will pull it up fast yes, if you just gave it to chat My GPT. Eyes are spent with weeping. Come on here. You have um, yes, have go ahead. Um it says, My eyes are spent with weeping, my stomach churs. My bile is poured out to the ground because of the destruction of the daughter of my people, because infants and babies faint in the streets of the city. Yes. So here we can see where the liver could be spoken of contextually because the bile is poured out because of the emotional upset. So what is it in your life that's stressing you out? What is in your life that is creating an upset? Can you check your Taroma? Because it might be your bile that's poured out. It might be signaling an unhealthy living condition. And then when you begin to think of it, it is the Truma where the priest begins to pray and commands the blessing of the Lord upon your house according to Ezekiel 40 and verse 31. But isn't it, but doesn't, now if the priest is commanding the blessing, then the Bible says the blessing of the Lord maketh what? And addeth no sorrow. And addeth no sorrow, yeah. Yeah, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow. Could it be that when the blessing of the Lord is in your life, it quiets the bile that is in your liver? That's good. That's good. It helps with the journey of your health. So um, thank you, Prophet Melina, for doing that kind of research and bringing that to us because now we have an organ in the body we can identify with. Yeah. The liver is part of my teruma. Yeah. And if I do adequate and proper giving, I will have proper living, and I will not live in an emotional upset. Mm. That's why you just got to love the knowledge. And Prophet Valina, if it wasn't for AI, you would have probably went into eternity without that information. You're right about that. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Prophet Joshua and I was in a church on yesterday when we were teaching pastors and leaders about AI, and Prophet Deborah was there. And um, Prophet Joshua, what would you say about the work that we've got to do with our people of leading them from the future, and how blessed is Zoe Ministries as a church? Uh, Master Prophet, first of all, I want to thank God for our Master Prophet and our leading lady, Pastor yes. Prophet, is Deborah Jordan. <laughs> amen and amen. In the chat, wherever you are, can we just salute and honor the oil, amen, that comes from their head? Because oh, yes. one of the things that I noticed as I was at the event is how much of a blessing we have here in mm -hmm. our midst mm -hmm. in the Master Prophet and in leading lady, Pastor Prophet, is Deborah. I mean, the people of God just getting the Master Prophet for about an hour and a half. I mean, 
they were blessed. I mean, here was individuals that maybe some some of the people of God, the saints of God, didn't even know about chat GPT, didn't even know that artificial intelligence existed. Wow. And so to have the master prophet be there almost like a prophetic Harriet Tubman, you know, he's like a, he's like a Moses of yeah, his day, you know, was. bringing the black folks, you know, bringing the saints of God, come on family, you know, come in. And, and, and it was such a blessing to hear um, uh, the people of God, how they were able to uh, um, buy back their time. And, and that's something thing that I love yes. and that I heard the Master Prophet as he was pulling, you know, because that's one of the things that I saw in it, that as a community, we got to have to pull family. We're going to have to get in our, um, um, into our elders, mm -hmm. to our young people. It was so surprising. There was um, the young people that were there didn't know about ChatGPT. They wow. had to learn about it. Wow. The older people that were there, they didn't know about it. Some people, wow. you know, the, it was just such a blessing. Those that knew about and didn't know they had the training wheels on. They were just using the bicycle. And so the Master Prophet had to introduce them to the Rolls Royce. So, you know, yeah. it was a blessing all day yesterday. I truly, truly enjoyed myself. Amen. And we want to thank you and Zoe Ministries. You are a blessed people. And we want you to know that as you give, you keep quality ministry around and you allow us. If it wasn't for your giving, I couldn't be out here in Vegas today. There's many pastors that I had invited um, to tell people about technology. Some couldn't make it. Some didn't have the resources to make it. Some couldn't afford to be away. But because of your giving, you've allowed a team to be able to come out here on Ben James and um, legs Joel Milan, Father Joel Milan, to be here. And I don't know, Bishop Oleg talked about possibly coming out. I don't know if he's going to make it because if he missed that flight, the next flight won't be until Thursday. And he more than likely will probably miss the flight. What you think, Legs? <laughs> <laughs> well, well I, are you going to be back on the same flight with me? Because if you were me, you're not going to miss it. <laughs> I ain't missing it. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer, wow. Leg. Good answer, Leg. Wow, that's and, um, a and, in Vegas. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and Obed was encouraging that he probably should be there um, since he's going to be, you know, pastoring the church and leading the church spiritually. Mm. Yes. You don't want to be like most pastors behind technology instead of in front of it. Zoe Ministries used to come out to this conference every year in the beginning, and it gave us the upper hand in terms of media and caused us to respect media. And um, I was trying to give, get Kenneth to come because there's a whole area here for film that would have been able to help him assist him since he's getting into film production. But when I told Kenneth about coming, Prophet Naomi was not having it. She says, I am not going to be in Disney with Nathan by myself. I don't blame And she, she gave that look to Prophet Kenneth. And he says, OK, I think I'll be a no on this trip. We'll have to catch it another time. Um, but every time I've come to the NAB show, I was always able to increase the million by another million dollars. And that's the God's honest truth. And um, Prophet Deborah, would you say that it's true? Prophet Deborah used to come out to these shows with me as well. What would you say about that, Prophet Deborah? Uh, yes, Your Grace, I so concur with you. Um, the NAB is, it just opens you up. Um, it's just like dream. It just, it shows you the possibility and where um, technology is heading. So it's, an, it's a very powerful and amazing time just to be out there with like-minded people and just showing you the possibility of what if or this is what you can do. So you're so um, right to grace. Genius and millionaires are made because they discovered what's missing. If you want to increase your value, discover what's missing and become the piece in the puzzle. Prophet Deborah, 
You've done puzzles. Has there ever been a missing piece in one of your puzzles? Yes, Your Grace. Most definitely. And what does it and what does it feel like when you have a missing piece of the puzzle? Well, number one, it doesn't feel good. Um, an area of, of frustration, uh, trying to figure out what happened to that missing piece. Did someone take the missing piece? Did they ship all the pieces? So you go into this inquiry as to why. So um, it's not a happy feeling when you're missing the puzzle because you have your heart set on doing something that is complete, making the finished product. So a lot of times um, we live our life even looking at doing puzzles um, with pieces or a piece that is missing. You know, I got everything right, but it's just that one piece that's missed. That's just that one idea that I need that's going to take me over top, that's going to um, show the picture and the beauty of the picture so that all can see. So it, it's, it's <coughs> powerful, Your Grace. Your value increase when you find missing pieces in people's lives. Mm, that's powerful. Mm. Okay, we're going to acknowledge those that found the missing piece in the Master Prophet life, and that's the Taruna. And so we're going to acknowledge those that has given it by way of Zell. So who would like to tell them how they can give their seed by way of Zell? Yes, and yes, Dr. Jordan and family, if you are sowing your trumas, that's right, your tarumas, via our Dr. Jordan Zell, you want to put in his email address. You got it right, family, bishopjordan at zoeministries.com. Bishopjordan at zoeministries.com. Dr. Jordan. Amen. Darlene Graham, $8.80. William A. Ellis, $20. John D. Bratton, $100. And $50. Um, hold on, I'm pulling up my other app. And bear with me, I, didn't, I, I walked out and didn't bring my glasses. All right. Um, Irene Jordan, um, $11.11. I got a call from Eddie this morning, a text. He was, well, he was willing to work out with me this morning. I says, I'm in Vegas. You should have been with me. So, um, um, look, I'm going to have a new Sunday morning workout partner. Amen. But, Prophet Joshua, I did get 140 squats in this morning before I left out. Good, Master Prophet. Come on in, Dr. Jordan. My God, yeah. my God. Whew. I'm 60 short. I try to get 200 before my day starts of squats and try to work on doing 500 squats a day. E? So, just want y'all to know my game. It, it, gets, it gets my heart rate up. Yeah. All right. Um, is D. Roy in the building there? Yes, he is, Dr. Jordan. Okay. Well, I just see his two number just came through. Okay. Nike at Brown, $5.38. Um, R. Copeland, $5. Tanya Tyler, $159. Tracy Plowden, $2.40. Anne Marie Allen, $5. Maddie Young, $6.56. Ernest Sampson, $50. Art um, Copeland, $5. Demetrius Campbell, $36. Nikolai Brooks, $90. Lamont Woodridge, $1.32. James Pace, $2. Norma Neverson, five dollars. Karen Mun Karen Moore, twenty-four dollars and twenty-four cents. Maddie Young, six dollars and fifty-two cents. Stephanie Peacock, four dollars and ninety-two cents. Nyakia Brown, four dollars and ninety-eight cents. Cynthia Dawson, twenty-five dollars. Walter Reed Hodges, four dollars and sixty-eight cents. Lori Ann C. Richards, two dollars and twenty-four cents. Okay, how will they give their seed if they're doing it by way of Venmo? Yes, Dr. Jordan and family, if you are sowing via our Master Prophet's Venmo, you want to put in his Venmo address. And you got it right, family. It's Bernard hyphen Jordan hyphen the number four. Again, that's Bernard dash Jordan dash the number four. Amen. On the Master Prophet's Venmo. Dr. Jordan. Amen. Father Patricia Green, $4.84. And we did go see Archdeacon on this weekend, smiling, doing well. Amen. And hoping to see him come home shortly. 
Amen. We continue keeping him in prayer. Um, Melinda Plato, $1.72. Takesha McLean, $84.77. Barbara Clark, $76. Sherman Pegues, $145. How would they do if they're doing it by way of PayPal? And those of you that are sewing via our Dr. Jordan's PayPal, you want to hit him up on his email address. You got it right again, family. It's bishopjordan at zoeministries.com. Again, bishopjordan at zoeministries.com for our Dr. Jordan's PayPal. Master Prophet. Amen. Ronald and Daba, $1.79. Kimberly Warren, $5.00. Uh, Regina, I mean Regina, Restored Ministries International, four dollars and sixty-five cents. And Celeste Murray, forty-five dollars. Phyllis Whitley, five dollars and fifty-five cents. How would they do it if they're doing it through the cash, app, the cat, the trauma through the cash app? How would they get it that way? Yes and yes, Master Provident family. If you're sowing your trumas, that's right, through the Taruma app, you can always hit up our leading lady, Pastor Prophetess Deborah Jordan's Cash App family, and her Cash App handle is dollar sign Prophetess Deborah. Again, it's dollar sign Prophetess Deborah, and Deborah is spelled D E B R A. Leading lady. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Bishop Elect. And your grace, we have Pamela Allen, $1.25. We have Woody, Sony Woods, $2. We also have Catherine Mizell, $28.95. And on yesterday, we had Pamela Allen, $1.24. Um, we also had Loring McGee, $13.30. And that is it, Your Grace. Oh, my goodness. Okay, that's it. Okay, let's see. How would they do it through the best cash app? And man, we may have to do this two or three times, Prophet Joshua, to make sure nobody do not take any shortcuts. If so, it's going to end up in Africa. And you're not going to get a thank you, and you're definitely not going to get a blessing for it. So tell them how they are to do it, because they must spell out all the letters. Yes, and yes, Master Prophet and family, listen, you heard it right. We know how to do this thing here. Let's go ahead and hit up our Dr. Jordan's cash app. It's the best cash app that any archbishop can have. We have to spell this out completely. Listen, the way I did it, I save it as a favorite. I spell it out completely. I don't miss any letters. You don't want to go by any pictures, family, because there's those that are out there perpetrating a fraud. Let's go ahead and put in the Master Prophet's full cash app handle. It's dollar sign, my archbishop. That's right, dollar sign, my archbishop. Make sure the P is at the end of it. Amen for prosperity. I love it. All right, so go ahead, family, hit him up. And when you do put in the Master Prophet's complete cash app handle, we'll see the hashtag. Now, we know, family, that that ain't just a hashtag. That's a commandment of a blessing, family, a thousand times more. Save the Archbishop as a favorite so he comes right up whenever you are sowing your trumas. Dr. Jordan. Amen. You can feel free to also do your trumas by um, Bitcoin if you're on cash app as well. Uh, as Brother says, Bitcoin has dropped. I told you about it's going to fall down and pull back quite a bit. And it is doing just that. But it is going to launch forward and possibly eventually double or do more than double. So we want those of you that are wise in investment um, to strategize accordingly. Amen. All right, we want to thank those of you that are doing this. Um, Dr. Irene Davenport, $1. Kiran Bradley, $2. Tamika Walker, $1.11. Sonny Woods, $1. Carolyn Wright, $1.99. Brittany Jefferson, $1. Terry Cox, $1. Leslie, Leslie Gardner, Garner, $96.56. Kendra Lewis, $52. That the unique then is $1.25. Shave by the world, $6.07. Elizabeth Howard, $7.50. Zaire, $1. Tina White, $10.25. Tamika Walker, 
$2,088, Renee, $30, Myra Moore, $25, Carolyn, $47.38, Jack Clark, $1.11, Robert Walker, $3.84, Deanna Kelly, $3.75, Latoya Dawkins, $1.00. Jose Martinez, $30. Bernadette Logan, $15. Grace Mercy, um, $4.44. Denise Bullock, $3. Tamika Walker, $2.88. Beverly Acano, $2.73. Janet Belton, $10. Calvin Osiami, $1.25. Latanya Johnson, $2.24. Renee, $4. Tarkus with $1.50. Roger Tommy. $5.75, Whitney Jefferson, $1, Edward Franklin, $25, Malayan Puritan, $20.14, Tarkus Witt, $1.25, Elisa Riddick, $1.11, Alexander Gray, the third, $13.82, John Pearson, $4, Ms. Yob Park, $5.25, Dawn Elizabeth Tallman, $15, Nikolai Giovanni, $1.71, Patty McNeil, $2.24. Jack Block, $2.24. Sharon Lewis, $5. Clarence Connie, $3.33. Rosalyn Briggs, $10.23. Evelyn Lilly, $2.22. Carol McIntyre, $25. But Belina Bratton, $50. Tova Hunter, $1.74. Michelle Varian, $5.55. T.S., $10. Deborah Wilson, $2.24. Betty Jones, $24.24. $0.44, D-Roy, $20, Grace Asquith, $1, Michael Bryan, $12.88, Dr. Irene Davenport, $1.02, Cheryl Clark, $5.53, Valerie Thomas, $5, Ming Canty, $15, Linda McClinton, $5.38, Linda Green, $2.50, Lawanda, $5, Heavenly Ingram, Javier, $224.24. And um, just make sure profits Deborah, that's for Taroma. Um, they usually know the difference, but just make sure for the 224.24. All right. And I believe that's everybody that has done this by way of Cash App. Your Grace, who's okay, the one that did, did that? that I need to check? Emily. Heavenly Ingram Janvier. Okay. And Alexander Gray, $3.35. Okay. Okay, they didn't have Cash App, Zelle, Venmo, or PayPal. Is there another way? Yes, and yes, Dr. Jordan and family, there is. Another way, you can always sow your trumas by calling it in. That's right, call it in. Speak with one of the wonderful moderators. They're at 888-831-0434. Now listen, when you sow in and call in your trumas, we ask that your truma is at least $10 or more. Amen. Or you can sow on any of the other ways to sow your truma. And we also ask that you inform the moderator, this is my truma, so they can set it aside and ensure that our Dr. Jordan receives of it. Dr. Jordan. Okay, and we have here William A. Richards, ten dollars and twenty-four cents. Anthony Grant, twenty. Maurice Smith, twenty-five dollars. Alan Averett, fifty-two dollars and sixty-six. Cameron Everly, ten dollars, and uh, someone else who don't want their name announced. Amen. All right, any others that have come through? Prophet Deborah, forty-four dollars and forty-four cents. Yes, and yes, Your Grace. We have one other individual, Erlene Williams. Um, she has given $2, and that is it. All right. Okay. Let's begin to pray. Father, we thank you for the Tarubba seed. We thank you for the people that have given. We command the blessing to rest upon their houses. We command the increase to be so, and so shall it be. And we declare the blessing. Move in their lives, move in their experience, multiply the seed that's been given. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Okay, people of God.
I'm going to get ready. You know, I may see me walking quite a bit. I'm going to see if I can get my 10,000 steps in today. And uh, we're going to get ready to go on the exhibit floors. Thank you all. Keep us in prayer as we continue leading from the future. We need others that will do the $1,000 seed. And I'm looking today. We have um, Evelyn Ingram Javier that has done it. Um, Prophet Jeremiah Campbell that's did $4,000 seed. Miriam Campbell has done $2,400 seed. But we need you. To, to be a part. And we are looking for nine others that will do a $1,000 seed and join with us. But I'm also asking everyone, this is the 15th of the 14th of the month. Today is Prophet Manasseh's birthday. Um, tomorrow is tax season. I'm asking everyone to do the 224-24 seed today. And I want you, to, want you to know why. Number one, it goes towards your blessing plan. If you finish paying that off in full, then it goes towards your mastermind. I want you to be generous in your giving. If you know the Lord has been a blessing unto you and in your life, I want you to go ahead and make that stretch. There's a handful of people that carries the weight of this ministry but if everyone will carry their weight, it won't be a heavy weight on no one area or one set of group of people. So if you can't do the 224-24, I know there's high cost in everything. We put more money in the fuel, more money into eating. But have you been, have you been putting more money in the kingdom? Don't let the kingdom of God go deficient and the kingdom of the world get more of your resources. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I ask you to be generous today to Zoe Ministries. Be generous today in your giving. And remember, give, and it shall be given to you again. Good measures, pressed out, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. I'll see y'all later on tonight and give you an update of what I may have discovered here on this convention floor. God bless you. Back to the sacred desk. Hallelujah. My God, my God. What a powerful, powerful um, time. A word from our Dr. E. Bernard Jordan. Amen. The Master Prophet. And, um, you know, one of the things that I love is that Dr. Jordan is always researching and bringing it back to yes. the community. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it takes something to get something, but not just hold on to it for yourself, but to give it back into the community. Amen. And watch what begins to take place. So at this time, family, we want to go ahead and get ready um, for our announcements for today. We're going to get ready for this afternoon's announcements. And then when we come back, we want to get ready to acknowledge everybody that everybody. has sold. Everybody. Amen. Everybody. everybody. I want to encourage everybody to sow. Everybody to get that seed of faith into the ground. And as you sow, I want you to sow twice. That's what I heard. Twice. It's like a sow twice. The first seed may be the seed that Archbishop commanded us to sow. But the second seed, I want us to sow the seed of intention mm -hmm. concerning the first seed. Come on here. Ah. God, I need you to move in the area of my family. God, I, I'm believing for a move of God to take place at work, especially with I have some co-workers. Come on here. I got, some, I got a boss. Amen. I'm dealing with some situations. Come on here. Yes. That I need you to go before me concerning. Yes, I'm right. sowing my seed twice. twice. Come on. I'm sowing. Yes. With sowing the seed and sowing it with intention. And sowing with intention. That's all right. Amen and amen. All right, family. Thank so you. let's go ahead. We want to get our seeds into the ground on tonight. And the best part that's right. We all can do it if we stand together as a community. Absolutely. You know, um, um, I can remember we were um, we were at one of those events, Prophetess Deborah, um, and we didn't know that, you know, we had one of these um, older individuals that were with us, they had to be in their 80s or 90s or so, and we were trying to climb up the mountain. And um, I never, I, um, <laughs> the instruction was we all had to get 
up the mountain and back mm -hmm. down. As a team. As a team. Mm -hmm. And we had to get our water. We had like a gallon yes. of water for Minister Barbara. And all the, all the team members had to go. Yeah, so, yeah, a bit of um, you know, we got to a portion of the mountain under Valina. Uh -huh. And um, one of the team members were not able to continue to go on okay. their own. Okay. And so um, we had one of these real, real big, strong guy on the team. Mm -hmm. He says, well, I can pick her up. And so he picked her up and, start and started her. carrying her. But Elder Bratton, he could only go but so far. Mm -hmm. There was some wisdom on the team, uh, Prophetess Deborah, that just said, Let's get all of the men to carry her. So we had, there was men, uh, Prophet Cordman, that were grabbing her leg. There were some other men that had gotten up under her shoulders. One man was in the back holding her head. Oh, there was, wow. a, yeah, we were, and we As carried and distributed that weight. Wait, uh, and we were able to move everyone, up right? the mountain okay. and back down. And... It wasn't uncomfortable for the person we were carrying. We kept checking in, for, you know, are you okay? Is this all right? You know, and, and we moved as a unit. Though one person could have done it, they couldn't get us all the way. And so I wanted to encourage us, family. I believe we can get up this mountain, amen, as a community, amen, if we stand together. If yeah, everybody, yes, everybody sits and does their part. You say, listen, I got two, I got my 224 right. 24 in. There's somebody else saying, listen, I got the, I got the rear in over here. I got my 224. Right I was saying, I got good. the foot in. Yeah, I got the, I got my 224, yeah. 24. And somebody sitting there saying, Elder, wait a second, I'm not going to let the neck go back. I got the head. My God, I'm doing my 224, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, amen and amen. But I'm not going to allow, come on here, I can't allow this thing to fail. I can't allow this thing to drop, amen and amen. And so go ahead, family, listen, we can do this together. And so during the announcements, together amen and amen. Together we are achieving much. Yes, together we are achieving yes. much, amen and amen. And so listen, family, I want to encourage you, get your seeds in, of obedience into the ground. And y'all know it, amen, we're going to be prophesying sign the word of the Lord to all those and when you, I just thought about it when you do the 224-24 you get yeah, to unseat a prophet come yeah, on right, here, my God. Right. so you're not only lifting you get a lift oh. Oh, oh, my God. Jesus, Jesus 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 my it. God my God come on here you're not the only one doing a lift you're gonna get, receive a lift come on wow. in the word of the Lord so family go ahead family amen y'all know the ways to sow my favorite way is to text to give I text one word my worship and I like to text it to the old school number. Amen. 646-762-0433. Or you can hit us up, amen, by texting one word, my worship, to 833-450-4245. Amen. There's others of you that says, listen, I'm calling in. I'm getting my best seed into the ground. Maybe it's the $100 I believe the mm. prophet seed on today. Amen and amen. You're saying, listen, I can do my part. I can do my part on today. Amen. I want to encourage you to go ahead and call in your seed. 888-831-0434. Amen. All right. We were supposed to be going to announcements. Yes, And yes, I done yes. got excited. All right. Go ahead. So while we're doing the announcement, the people can sow that seed of intention. I know I already done did my seed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to the master prophet asked for the 224. Yes. I'm going to do that. I already did my $1,000 seed. So that 224, 24 seed that I'm getting ready to sow is going to be my seed of intention. Mm, what about you? Yeah. That's good. That's good. All right, DJ, take us away and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Grace and Peace. I'm Prophetess Diana, and I have some special announcements that you need to hear on today. Beginning April 5th, our Sunday evening service will begin at 6 p.m. Please mark your calendars and spread the word. Join the Master Prophet's Blessing Plan number 16. Here's what you receive. Exclusive textbooks, workbooks by Archbishop Ebernard Jordan. Chef's Garden Box with fresh vegetables from the farm to your doorstep after completing your pledge. Access to the Master Prophets Library app. Access to Prophecology Summer Session 2024. Prophetic coaching on the Zoe Virtual Campus after reaching a $1,000 contribution. Take advantage of these remarkable opportunities. Join now, register now by calling our partner care line at 888-831-0434. Once registered, your tithes and your offerings will go towards the cost of the Master Prophets Blessing Plan number 16, which is only $5,500. Once you fulfill the Master Prophet's Blessing Plan requirements, you can go to the next level and become a member of the Mastermind for an additional $8,500. As a member of the Mastermind, you get exclusive access to seminars led by experts in various industries for those who are ready to expand their minds and businesses. Don't be left out. Sign up now. Call now at 888 888- 831-0434. Become a member of the Zoe Ministries and deepen your spiritual journey. Here's how. Register. ZoeMinistries.com. Click on the member tab and choose new member application to sign up. Attend new online classes beginning Sundays, March 3rd through April 14th from 11 a.m. to 12 noon on the Zoe Virtual Campus. Every Sunday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., the Children's Church and Youth Church will now meet on Zoom. For more information, please call 888-831-0434. Join us on April 13th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Mastermind Number 16 on the Zoe Virtual Campus. Mastermind Number 16 is much more than just a wealth event. It is also a life-changing opportunity to take full control of your personal environment, understand the trends of artificial intelligence, and fourth industrial revolution. You can create a secure future for yourself and your family through prophetic insight and planning specifically designed for your prosperity. You will also have the chance to network with like-minded people who are also committed to achieve their personal goals and supporting each other along the way. If you are a member of the Mastermind number 16, you'll receive free access to attend this event. For all non-Mastermind members, it is an $8,500 registration fee. Join the Master Prophet and the Company of Prophets for our 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. or our 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. conference call. You can listen to teaching by the Master Prophet and the Company of Prophets, as well as receive live prophetic updates. You will also receive prophetic words from the Company of Prophets when you sow your seed to the ministry. Call in at 515-604-9266. Are you in need of prophetic direction for your life? If you are a part of the Master Prophets Blessing Plan number 14, you can sign up now for our 15-minute coaching sessions with the prophetic coaches on the Zoe Ministries virtual campus today. Call 888-831-0434 to schedule your appointment now. If you have not already done so, go to zoeministries.com and download the Zoe Ministries virtual campus. Did you have a prophetic experience recently? Did your word come to pass received by the Master Prophet and the Company of Prophets? Share your testimony with us today by emailing it to media at zoeministries.com. We want to share your testimony with our partners and social media platforms. We extend a heartfelt invitation for you to join us in observing Holy Communion on every third Sunday of the month, right here on the Zoe Virtual Campus. This is a sacred moment to honor the Lord through this meaningful sacrament. Please make sure to have your elements ready in advance so we can all partake together in unity and reverence. Are you called to be a prophet? 
Join the Seekers meeting daily at 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 9.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the Seekers room on the Zoe Virtual Campus. The Master Prophet is looking for 120 new prophets to join the prophetic order of Mar Elijah. Will you be one of them? You can now listen to Master Prophet E. Bernard Jordan's weekly podcast, Prophetology the Podcast, where the Master Prophet interviews experts in various fields such as ministry, health and wellness, business, education, social justice, and more. You can listen on your preferred streaming platform such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, or the TuneIn app. Or you can listen on ZoeMinistries.com or BishopJordan.com. Remember to subscribe, like, and share Prophecology the Podcast. Are you on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube? Stay connected by liking and sharing Bishop Jordan, Pastor Deborah Jordan, and Zoe Ministries Church on Facebook. Follow and repost us on Instagram at Archbishop underscore Jordan, at Pastor Deborah, and at Zoe Ministries Official. Follow and retweet us on Twitter at Bishop Jordan and at Pastor Deborah. Last but not least, subscribe, like, and share to our YouTube channels, Zoe Ministries and Bishop Jordan, to get all of the latest updates. Learn how to calculate your Taruma seed. Download the Taruma app today. Listen to your prophetic words from your one-on-ones with the Master Prophet and the Company of Prophets. Download the Prophecy Now app. Both apps are available on Google, Apple, and Amazon. Download it now and tell a friend. If you are a part of the... Master Prophet's Blessing Plan and the Mastermind, download the My Mastermind Journey app. It allows you to track your intentions and the app is based on the Master Prophet's work. On the My Mastermind Journey app, it's easy to sign up. You can create an account using the email address that you use with Zoe Ministries. You can create your personal profile by following the prompts and answering the questions about yourself, including your name, gender, email address, and phone number. You can view your daily action steps by tapping the intentions icon, add an action step to your list of daily intentions, tap on the action step, or you can create your own custom action step by tapping on create custom action step. Type in the name of the action step and assign it to one of the four categories and choose an icon. You can also add a reminder for yourself. Get your progress reports by tapping on progress to monitor your progress on a daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly basis. Let's master our minds by downloading the My Mastermind Journey app, available in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. The April anniversaries are as follows. Minister Harris and Vicki Crooks, Brother James Johnson, Bishop-elect Joshua Nathaniel Jordan and Minister Jessica Jordan, Prophetess and Brother Brenda and Daryl Armstead Compton, and Sister Mary Irving. Happy anniversary to all of you from your Zoe Ministries family. The April birthdays are as follows. Prophetess Lavina Flamer, Prophet Robert Walker, Sister Loisanne Mahone, Prophet Sonia Charles Kanajeter, Moderator Norian Luna, Sister Sylvester Lacey, Prophetess Liana Davis, Sister Melissa Graham, Prophet Shannon Mims, Prophetess Kimberly Cochran, Moderator Jenny Rose Bamba, Prophet Douglas Miller, Sister Valerie Reed, Sister Nicolette Brown, Prophetess Charlene Norris Hendricks, Brother Theodore Jackson, Prophetess Jenea Macklin, Sister Glawanda Lewis, Sister Erlene Williams, Prophet Terrence Sams, Prophet Juana Mooring, Prophet Anna Serpus, Mother Cheryl Forbes, Prophet Vanity Dennis, Brother Omar Thomas, Prophet Rivi Mitchell, Colleen Ellis, Prophet Deborah Drummond, Fledgling Nathan Cook, Prophet Valerie Smith, Prophet Dante Harmon, Prophet Daniel Watkins, Sister Claudia Medina, Prophet Melissa Taboda, Brother Anthony Nicoli Swilling, Prophet Lisa Williams, Prophet Annie Lang, Moderator Salman Kashif Jadani, Prophet Catherine Calabrese, Sister Macy Mills, Sister Anna Torres, 
Prophet Paul Thurville, Prophet Evelyn Lalee, Prophetess Stacy Lane, and none other than our Bishop-elect, Prophet Joshua Nathaniel Jordan. Happy birthday to all of you from your Zoe Ministries family. If you have a birthday or anniversary coming up and you are a member of the Master Prophet's Blessing Plan, please send your headshot to info at zoeministries.com so you can be included in future birthday and anniversary celebrations. This concludes our service announcements. Mark? Mark 7. America's Black Prophet is a documentary not to glorify who I am, but America's Black Prophet is really an institution of prophets that really speaks to the issue of social justice, as you will see as this documentary starts to unfold. See, God starts with a word, and that word lands into a man, and then that man takes it to an institution and the institution becomes a nation. America's Black Prophet is a transformative energy that speaks to the social injustice and lift up the weak and takes them from the low places and sets them on the high places of life. Stay tuned and watch America's Black Prophet start to form within you.
and you are right here, right now, watching The Power of Prophecy. Peace. Praise God, praise God. This is Master Prophet Ebert on Joy, your most trusted name in prophecy. You know, the other day I was looking at life, and then I looked at two words, and most of the time we talked about, we talk about the word I am, and we understand that I am represents self-existence. And so while I was sitting here in one of the family rooms, and the kitchen is right behind me, they're cooking, you get a sense of purpose that everyone comes to life to be. Therefore, when I begin to look at the verb to be in the first person, I begin to see I am. And so I want to start out with this block here, and I want to just to look at these two words, be. And when we begin to look at be, I want to ask you this, who do you be for the purpose of the word be, be? Because when you begin to be, you begin to start to choose what it is that you will become in life. I used to teach our children in children church that what I be is up to me. I want you to say that three times with me. What I be is up to me. What I be is up to me. What I be is up to me. But a lot of times, people end up being something else. They, be, they start to be the lie. And if I begin to look at this here, how many things in your life might be lying to you? Or you chose to be that lie. I mean, poor, you grew up in the wrong zip code, so it seems. So you begin to believe that you are your environment. You can start being the lie. You can start being your salary. That too could be a lie. You can start being the apartment or the house that you don't want to be in. And you can end up being that lie. And you can continue in that lie. But then we begin to see something else. You can remove the lie and start to believe. And I wonder what would happen if you begin to believe. Believe the promises of God. Instead of being the lie, be the life. Be the life by being at first in consciousness. Because once you are that in consciousness, you become that in experience. That's when you start to live. You'll start to live when you choose to believe that you are that lie. Until that point, you are being the lie. And then you'll start giving way to what we call the little voice. What is the little voice? The little voice is LV. That little voice loves keeping you small. You've got to stop minimizing your greatness by living in your smallness. The moment you choose to be, there's a little voice that's going to go off in your head called the inner critic that is going to talk you down off the ledge of greatness in life so you can be that lie. I think that there is lie. Isn't it? It wants to lie to you. That little voice. That little voice wants to lie to you. And I'm going to take that little voice. And I believe that's LV. Little voice. That little voice, that LV, is taking you down the road of yesterday and keeping you out of the prophecy of your tomorrow. If I can get you to disarm little voice, I get you to start 
to believe again. And you'll start to move that L and that V back into place. And if you choose to believe, your prophecy, your future starts to unfold. I'm Master Prophet E. Bernard Jordan, your most trusted name in prophecy. I just want to give you another perspective of the way your life can be lived. Why don't you take out your building blocks today and start building a new future towards your life. Peace. Have you ever considered the act of giving as an act of planting? Just like a seed sown in fertile soil, the principles of teruma, tithes and offerings are planted into the rich ground of our lives. These are not mere rituals or duties. They are profound expressions of trust and partnership with the divine, a testament to our faith. As we delve into this sacred practice, we see it as more than giving. It's a planting, a deliberate action with anticipation for a bountiful harvest. Taruma, a small yet significant portion, is the first seed we plant. It's the finest of our fruits, a gift offered in gratitude for the divine's provision. Imagine each seed you plant as a promise of future abundance. The first seed, Taruma, is the most important. It sets the tone for the harvest to come, preparing the ground for the bounty that awaits. It's like the cornerstone of a building, providing a firm foundation for the structure that follows. It's a principle rooted in ancient wisdom, teaching us that acknowledging the source of our provision with our first and best leads to an increase. This act of faith and gratitude sets the stage for a bountiful harvest, a testament to the power of giving. Following the Taruma, we pay our tithes, a tenth of our increase. This isn't just a duty, but a heartfelt declaration of trust in the divine's ability to provide, protect, and multiply. The tithe, like a seed, may leave our hands, but it never leaves our lives. It enters the soil of the spiritual realm, nurtured and grown until it produces a harvest far greater than the original seed. Next, we plant our offerings, seeds sown at will, above and beyond the tithe. These are our expressions of gratitude, love, and desire for growth. They're not just for our own lives, but also for the lives of others. These seeds are sown in fertile ground, watered by faith and expectancy, and they yield a harvest that reflects the heart and generosity of the giver. As these seeds intertwine, they grow in the soil of faith and obedience. With each act of giving, we cultivate a field ripe for a harvest of blessings, provision, and abundance. This spiritual agriculture shows us that the measure of our planting directly influences the measure of our harvest. These seeds are sown in fertile ground, watered by faith and expectancy. The bountiful harvest from these seeds goes beyond material wealth. It encompasses peace, joy, spiritual growth, and the unfolding of divine purposes. These practices are not just about giving, but also about cultivating a rich field ripe for blessings, provision, and abundance. They embody the spiritual principle that what we give we receive back in a more abundant measure. It's a testament to the profound truth that in the economy of the divine, giving is the gateway to receiving and planting is the path to a bountiful harvest. Mark? Mark 7. America's Black Prophet is a documentary not to glorify who I am, but America's Black Prophet is really an institution of prophets that really speaks to the issue of social justice, as you will see as this documentary starts to unfold. See, God starts with a word, and that word lands into a man, and then that man takes it to an institution, and the institution becomes a nation. America's Black Prophet is a transformative energy that speaks to the social injustice and lift up the weak 
and takes them from the low places and sets them on the high places of life. Stay tuned and watch America's Black Prophet start to form within you. Peace. I'm Prophet Kenneth Cook. And I'm Prophet Naomi Cook. And we want you to grab your coffee or tea. Or tea. I'd rather do coffee. Or coffee tea. Join us at the Power of Prophecy pre show now. On the Super Sunday. Amen. Super. Yes, on a Super Sunday. We bless the Lord on today, family. Amen and amen. We pray you had an opportunity, amen, not only to hear the announcements, but to get your worship into the ground. And when you got your worship in, amen, I know it sounded, it felt like the same way breaking news feels like. Amen. There was a cheer, there was an excitement that went in as I went in and sowed. Amen and amen. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And so, family, on today, I want to encourage you to begin to get that seed of faith into the ground. I was listening to something um, the other day by Reverend Ike and the Master Prophet, and it truly blessed me um, what the Master Prophet and Reverend Ike begin to share, that I am always transacting with the infinite. Come on and type it into the chat. I am always what? Transacting with the infinite. Yes, 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 yes. And I paused the video, Prophetess Deborah, when I heard it, and the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to me and says, You got to check your seat. Come on here. You got to check your seat. Come on here. Check your S E A T. Yes, you better check your seat. Come Check on, your guys. seat. Yes. Come on here, because somewhere in my Bible, I believe it's in Ephesians, come on here, that it says that we have uh, 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 um, um, elevated with him, yes. and we are what? Seated, seated in heavenly seated. places. Come on here. I am <laughs> transacting with what? The wow. infinite. I'm my so God. Sure. I'm always transacting with the infinite. Come on here. Ah, there is shot. nothing little over here. Come on, y'all better, y'all better get Get clear. Come on. Continual uh, interaction. Yes, I'm in a continual yes. interaction. Yes, 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 yes. Come on here. Because I'm a co-creator with Christ. Come on here. Yes, I'm a partaker of oh, his yes. divine nature. Yes, 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 yes. Woo! My God, my I God. Am. I am. Yes, yes, yes. Come on here. So I'm clear about my seat. Ooh. Yes, I am seated. I'm seated in heavenly places. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Come on here. I'm not seated with the scornful. Ah. But I'm seated in heavenly places. Come on here. You gotta get you gotta get clear about where you're seated at. Right. Uh, where you're seated at, where you where you're seated at. Come on here. And position determines what you will receive. Your position. Your positioning. Come on here. Wow. Your positioning will determine what it is that I receive. Come on here. That's why I, um, uh, 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 Prophet um, Xavier this ago, well, with our generation, that my bow, or my bow, which is spelt the same, it's very interesting. Your bow 
Yeah. 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 And your bow. Oh. Yeah. It's a weapon. Uh, come on here. My position. My, uh, my uh, Hey, come on here. Yeah. How I am yeah. positioned determines what it is that I'm about to receive. Uh. Come on here. God has positioned me in this season for abundance. Yeah, uh, Elder Believe, you so want question. to come on. Yeah. Are you saying, because I have my earplugs on, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> I heard bow and bow. Are you talking about bow or the bow of the ship? Oh, the seat is, I didn't even dream. think about that. See, now, that's, the bow of the ship. now, now, now you're bringing some men. I was talking about our now bowing now like as we're in prayer in or in a bow. Come oh. on here. That there is a power in my bowing and my bowing. Oh. Yes. A weapon. Ooh. A weapon. And it's, it's very hard. interesting um, that I said bowing because B-O-E-I-N-G mm. is an airplane. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Come on here. And which means that my seed will take me where I can't go. Oh, my God, my God. Come on here. It expedites. Come on here. Where I may have taken me 16 hours to get down to Georgia, I can get down to Georgia in two. Come on here. Ah, because of what I'm working with. There is a power that exists in my seed. Yes. And the bow is the front part of the ship. It's the front part. It's the front. So you need to do the bow first. You got to do the bow first. And is the bow the part that um, is responsible and part of turning the ship? That's a great question. And, it, and the ship's movement? And as you're pulling that up, let's bring to the screen, come on here, we got the sniper. Oh, Amen. Yes, 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 yes. And we also have our very own minister and prophetess, Evelyn Lilly. So coming to the screen, let's find out, are they ready? Uh -oh. Ooh, you better come Ooh. on here. You better come on. Y'all, I, I don't know if y'all are seeing how Prophetess Elder Gloria Kelly's avatar is First dressed of all, to her hair. Look at the hair. Are you, are you seeing? Right. You see are you hair? seeing the fit? Now, those of y'all that are on Instagram and YouTube, they saying, "What are y'all talking about?" I don't see nothing, Bishop. Like I see you. Amen. <laughs> I don't see Elder Kelly. Well, you gotta come on in to the sanctuary. All right, let's play the music, family. Coming to the screen. Is none other than our very own worthy class master. She is assumed to be graduate at the Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology. Let's give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise for our very own elder, prophetess, Gloria Jean Kelly. Good afternoon, Bishop Elect Joshua Jordan, first leading lady. Bless you, Deborah bless Jordan. You. Good to see you at all the sacred desks. Good afternoon. Good day. Bless you. Good day, good day, good day, Prophetess Kelly. Amen. And she's not alone. Let's hit that music one more again. Amen. <laughs> Coming to the screens, for those of you that are in Verbella, she's already there. We want to bring to the screen none other than our very own prophetess. She is a grandmother. Yes. And she also is out of the DMV area of the members of the Company of Prophets. Let's bring to the screen none other than our very own powerhouse, minister and prophetess, Evelyn Lilly. <laughs> Fantastic. Glad to be here, Bishop Elect and Leading Lady Deborah Jordan and everyone Thank on the you. sacred desk. Good afternoon and happy Sunday. Yes. Happy Sunday, happy Sunday. And how are um um how is the grandbaby doing, Prophetess Evelyn? Um, the big girl. Yes, the... is doing well. <laughs> you know, they are just so growing so fast and just learning so much it's scary but i know it, really in the future yes it, and is, is annalise about eight years old now or nine yeah she's eight she'll be nine in may wow, wow. that's the next that's generation of prophets it. now listen and those prophets do not play those prophets um um we were out at Disney, Prophetess Deborah, 
And um, we had to get that Joelle because jo- she. Joelle, she speaks. Yes, yeah, she does, <laughs> Prophetess Deborah. So she said something. I said, What did you say? She said it again to me. And then I thought, you know, Prophetess Deborah, I was from the generation where you would say it under your breath, you know, oh. in hopes that somebody didn't hear you. Right, Elder Valina. Oh, no, no, no. This generation here, they say it loud and clear so that you and can hope hear it. In hopes that you right. hear it. <laughs> Elder Kelly, my little daughter, four years old, says, I said, you know you can't say that. And she said to me, well, Daddy, you know I can say whatever it is I want to say. And I says, okay, Ooh. now I got it. Oh, yes, those are losing yes, yes. teeth words. Uh-huh. uh-huh. I felt that. She I like, felt that. I told her, said that. she like stood up, amen, spiritually on me right there. Yes. And, there. and I sat and I says, you know what, Joel, I got that. Thank you for sharing that. And I says, but right now you can't say anything. And so that was clear, right? Yeah, and, you know, she said. Yeah, and, but she said, and she was clear. She says, I can say whatever I want to say. But you know what? I think that that's what's going to be necessary in this next move of God with the next generation. That's why our next generation is like that, because we're going to need to have some individuals prophesy to some Ahabs. Come on here. Where they're going to have to say, I can say what God has me having to say. I love that gentle parenting. Uh, Gentle parenting. That's gentle parenting. Yeah. I don't know about that. So my day. Like, <laughs> <laughs> when I fully got That's out. That's right. All your teeth. All your teeth. When I got out. Teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's 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 good. I think I think it's really really good. And um, one of the things that I am also noticing is that the generation is very um, expressed. They're very expressive. Yes, yes. they are. They're very expressive. Um, to, 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 to be around a child and to be clear that they are, and they're saying things like, I'm excited. And to be clear that they're saying things like, I'm sad or I'm, I'm feeling frustrated. They do that every day. And it's like, and it's like wow, at, four years, I, at old. four years old, at seven years old, it, it, it's in there, it was in there. I knew I was going through some of these things, but I, didn't, I wasn't you saying mean, yeah. those words, amen, in that way. And no. so, yeah, this is the next generation of prophets and... Um, they are they are prophetic. They really are. They are um, prophetic. When we were out, I I could have sworn I knew it. I says, you know, I looked at the weather report, Prophetess Kelly, and um, I says, listen, it's going to be sunny today. And um, Jay said to me, she said, Daddy, I would get it. I would get. I would bring our ponchos today. <laughs> and I didn't listen to Jay. Jay, Prophetess Whoa. Deborah, and, and we. And she's eight years old. And she was eight years old. Probably it was Whoa. sunny outside. Yeah. I was wondering, what is wrong with the child? She's saying, we should bring our ponchos today. <laughs> it's sunny. Well, so- Prophet is Kelly, by the time we got to Magic Kingdom, there was a rain <laughs> that went over. We ended up having to purchase the pot. And, you know, little JL wouldn't let me live it out. I told Daddy we should have brought our ponchos today. <laughs> that is the next generation of Prophet's family. Amen. And so we bless the Lord for them. All right. We got to get our unseats done. Is that yes. right? All right. Yes and yes. All right. So let's go ahead. Members of the Company of Prophets that are available, y'all know how to do it. Let's go ahead and uh, put yourself in the chat. Um, ooh, and we have some leaving early. Nichelle Berry is still here. Yeah, Prophetess Nichelle Berry, and are you still here? Yes and yes. And greetings, leading lady, Pastor Deborah Jordan, and Bishop-elect Prophet Joshua Jordan. Yes. Yes and yes. Blessings, yes and bl- blessings, Prophetess Nichelle, and we know you're leaving out in about two minutes. Are you going to be available to give some unseats to? Yes and yes. All right. We will give you Felicia Bamberg, Winston Davis, and Leslie Gardner. Thank you, received. Thank you so much, Prophetess Nichelle. All right, let's see. Is there a doctor in the house? Do we have Dr. Gregory Clark? Is he available? Or has he left? I know our linguistic love doctors. Two minutes. All right. Amen and amen. All right. Let's go ahead and find out here. Okay. Our very own. Cheryl's here. God bless you, Prophet Cheryl. Bless me. I am here. God bless you. And Pastor Deborah. Bless you. Bless you, you, Prophet Cheryl. And would we be able to give you and Dr. Clark? Um, some unseats before you head out. Um, Dr. Clark, are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Come I- on I- here. 
I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, Dr. Clark and 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 soon to be Dr. Cheryl. Amen. We want to give to you uh, Prophet Nikolai Crooks, Willie Baker Jr., and Rena Mayfield. Not a problem. Thank you so much, Prophet and Dr. Gregory Clark and Prophet and Minister Cheryl. Peace and blessings, mighty man and woman of God. Peace and blessings. Just to be clear, is we sharing those three? Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll break it. I was thinking the two were one, and so I messed it up. I messed it. We'll give them two a piece. So, all right, Dr. Clark, we'll give you Nikolai Crooks and Willie Baker Jr. and and Minister and Prophet Cheryl Clark. We'll give you Rena Mayfield and Anna Cooks. Amen. Receive. Thank you. Receive. Thank you Receive. both. Thank you both, mighty man and woman of God. All right. Next we have, let's see here, um, our very own deacon and prophetess, Barbara Tuck. Are you there? God bless you, Bishop Elect, and to our beautiful pastor, Pastor Deborah, and the company of prophets. I am present. Thank you. Bless thank you. Bishop. Thank you, prophetess Barbara. And we are going to give to you Nicole Johnson. Catherine Mizell, and Jennifer Carrier. Thank you so much as I've received it. Thank you. Thank you, Prophetess Barbara. Peace and blessings. As to you as well. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We receive it. Man. All right. We done. Um, uh, let's see here in the chat. Who do we have? Um, can you tell me who's in the chat? Who said I'm available? What other prophets are available? Is that Prophet Clarence Diamond Cunny? Diamond King. Prophet Diamond, Diamond King. And Pat, uh, Prophet Maddie Young. Cynthia Dawson. All right. Yeah. I'm trying to do it in order. That's why. Okay. All right. I think I see Prophet Clarence Cunney first. So we'll go Prophet Clarence Cunney. Uh, Prophet Clarence, can you call for us um, Benjamin Davis, Al Elder Alexander Gray, and Robert Hargis? Received. Thank you so much, Prophet Clarence. Peace and blessings, mighty man of God. The next thank is Cynthia you. Dawson. Next, thank you, thank you, family. Next is Prophet Cynthia Dawson. And we will have you call um, Joshua Jordan. After the service. After the service. Um, uh, Prophet Christopher Scott and Tanya Tyler. Receive. Thank you. The next okay. Is Diamond King. Thank you. Next is Prophetess Diamond King. God bless you, Prophetess Diamond King. All right. Next and we're going to we're gonna give you Prophetess Diamond. We'll give you Prophet Jeremiah Campbell. And okay. I got you. All right. So we're going to give you Prophet Jeremiah Campbell, Prophetess Diamond King. Thank you. Thank you, mighty woman of God. Peace and blessings. Our worthy class master, Prophet is Maddie Young. Um, yes. God bless you, mighty woman of God. We're going to give you Prophet is Miriam Campbell. Received. Thank you, uh, Prophet is Maddie. Peace and blessings. All right. Is that Prophet is Juana Mooring? Yes and yes. Peace and blessings, Prophet is Juana. We're going to give to you our leading lady. Pastor Prophet is Deborah Jordan, and you'll be able to call her after the service. Mm -hmm. Receive. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Doctor and Prophet is Nyakia Brown. God bless you, mighty woman of God. We're going to have you call um, Elder Valina Bratton after, after the service. Receive. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Nyakia. Peace and blessings. Yeah, Prophet Shirley. And Prophet Shirley Fox, we're going to give to you our very own Heavenly Ingram Janvier. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prophet Shirley Fox. Peace and blessings. All right, is that it for now? All right, we are complete members of the company of Prophet. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen and amen. All right, family. Well, let's go ahead. I want to um, get started in our teaching on today. And um, I wanted to also encourage there those that we are believing God for that would stand with the 1,000 
$1,000 seed or more. Those that would stand with the $1,000 seed or more. Listen, let me tell you something. I've seen God move at the $1,000 level mm. in my life, amen, in my family's life. And can I tell you, family, that there's real estate favor that's connected to that $1,000 yes. seed, amen and amen. There is family favor that's connected to that seed as you begin to release it. So if that's you on today, amen, the Mass Prophet called for 12 of us, amen, um, that would sow in faith. And so I believe we're looking for seven others on today. Go ahead and add. There's some of us that are so close, amen. We could just add, amen. Go ahead and upgrade. Do um, I'm, I'm doing the difference. Uh, count me in to do my $770, amen, or so, so that I can make sure I get there, amen, to the $1,000 level on today. Amen and amen. If that's you, we want to encourage you to go ahead and release the seed, amen, of obedience. All right. But with that being said, let's get ready for our teaching on today. Are you ready for your teaching? Yeah. I got the remote family. All right. <laughs> oh, hey, what you say? Oh, All right. <laughs> oh, God. They should have never gave me the remote. They should have. <laughs> 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 All right, Elder, <laughs> Elder Kelly, we got to have you take care of this first slide. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Cultivating the Minds Eden, the Guide for Abundant Living, Lesson 13, Magnifying Your Desired Reality. Mm, magnifying your desired reality. All right, Minister and Prophetess Barbara, we'll have you pick up Matthew. Matthew 13, verses 16 through 17 in the King's... Matthew 3. Oh, Matthew 3. Thank you. 16 through 17 in the King's James Version. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Verse, verse 17, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Mm, let's talk about this here for a moment, members of the company of prophets. What would you all members of the company of prophets like to share or add? Amen. Concerning this here verse of scripture that we have here. Matthew chapter three, verses 16 through 17. Hmm. 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 We know Bishop be like um, about that scripture. We see that Jesus yielded to John the Baptist because John the Baptist wanted him to to say, "No, I'm not going to baptize you because you're greater than me." Jesus suffered now the permits to fill all unrighteous to fill right. Right, all righteousness, and when he was baptized, the heavens opened, the Spirit of God came in the form of a dove, and the Father said. This my son, my well pleased because he was obedient to follow the instruction, even though it was against the law, Prophet Joshua. Mm, that's good. That's good. Amen. Anyone else wanted to share? Uh, Bishop Blood. Yes, um, Prophet. What I find power. What I find powerful here also is that it looks as almost like God gave his stamp of approval, right? When God before, so this is basically the beginning of of Jesus's walk into this and. It's like almost God giving his stamp. Whenever he calls you to do something, he gives you that stamp, that seal of approval to know where to go forth. Go ahead to, to declare who you are and declare where you have to go in the season. So I thought it was powerful because you could have just been baptized, right? But I think in the space of, of God calling, making a statement was very profound as to what Jesus was about to enter into. That's so good. Amen and amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Any other prophets? Yes, Elder yes. Kelly. Yes, Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, and, and this we see, yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, the beginning of Jesus' uh, ministry, if you will, or certainly certainly signifying the relationship between the Father and the Son. But what we also see here is a, a spirit, something spiritual here, a spiritual rebirth, if we can say that, a, a spiritual purification. The central theme of his ministry is really tied up in this act that was done there that we what well, that was told to us and that they heard that the father approved of wow <laughs> uh 
Um, this text is so pregnant. Yeah, because I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, li I'm listening to what Papa's Bob as you read and, and you're reading it, but what stands out to me um, also, um, John. So you see the, 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 the rising up of Jesus' public ministry coming forth, and you see John, mm. and um, you see two great... Oh, it fell off. Oh, Thank you. Uh, I'm looking at um, the verse of scripture, and, and it's very powerful because you see two great um, vessels. You see Jesus and you see John. Um, John doing what he's been called to do or been doing, baptizing, telling the people God to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And you see Jesus coming forth and the rising of his ministry. And it's just like uh, uh, the master prophet, we always say, uh, when the prophet comes, he comes with two certificates. You see the birth and you see the death. So you see the birthing forth of Jesus' mm -hmm. um, public ministry. And then you see um, John the Baptist, because after this here, um, we see John, um, he, um, later on he, he um, gets arrested, go to prison, and is later on beheaded. So you see two vi figures that, that have risen, mm -hmm. but you see one is um, taking precedence of the other. Wow. And you see John said, well, who's she? he said, I'm not worthy of this, but Jesus encouraged said, no, suffer this thing to be because it, because Jesus came to fulfill all that the scripture had already spoken concerning him. So there's a lot of symbolism um, yes. we read um, in, this ver in this passage of scripture um, with Jesus. You, you see the divine voice. You see God calling for them. You see the validation. So you're seeing a lot of things that open up, but yet you see another man. I look at John in his humanity, but I can't do this. I, this is divinity. This is spirit speaking, and I'm only just flesh. How can these things be? But we see spirit began to spirit and the flesh working together, um, coming together to fulfill the will and the call and the purpose of God. That's good. Pastor, you stirred something up when you said that because the father said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So he in Dosh Jesus' ministry before he was tested in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. He agreed already that he's a pleasing son. Even before he was led up into the wilderness, God affirmed and endorsed Jesus. Mm. Yeah. And, and now with, with John, because this is just really just... Um, John, John position as the man of God that has um, been called doing what he's been doing. Um, we see John also recognizing, number one, that Jesus, he was sinless. Mm -hmm. Recognize that, 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 that this is spirit. You know, we also see John recognizing Jesus' superiority. He said, um, I'm not worthy of this. You're much higher than I. You should be baptized me, not the other way around. We see also John humility. I'm um, being humble enough when Jesus told him to suffer this thing to be so. So many times we may find ourselves in situations and circumstances that you may not feel worthy of the world. I got this call of God and I don't feel worthy, worthy of the God has blessed me with this, but I don't feel worthy. But there's a humility that John is demonstrating even in the, being obedient to the will and call of what Jesus is telling him to do because he was moving in a divine plan of God that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Yeah, you know, this is so good. And if I may, um, Prophetess Deborah, one of the things that it brought me to thinking about is perhaps this text has embedded within it the ideas of the truma and the tithe. Ah, mm -hmm. the two that, figures, yes, yes, that yes. Can I vessels. find my truma yes, back Bible into Santa. the hands of my priest? Yes, now, yes, Now, it's very yes. interesting that John the Baptist was six months older than, than Jesus, Jesus was. Yes. Um, that when Elizabeth and Mary had come into contact with I each leaked, other, leaked, the Bible leaked, declares leaked, that something so had leaked. leaked. Hey, yeah. Haramasiki. In in shop. Something yes. has leaped in her womb. Amen. Yes. And I believe that whatever it was that was leaping had to do with the understanding of getting the first fruits back into the hands of the priest. Mm. Right. Mm -mm. Wow. Jesus. There's a scripture in um, Malachi. Now, this is, I, I didn't plan on this, Prophetess Deborah, but when you started opening this thing up here, this is very, very powerful. Here. 
that we can begin to see something. Can I find my true mother? Because the scriptures talk to us that Jesus is the first fruits of those that are dead. And so we can begin to find something there. Can I find first fruits back into the hands of my supervising priest? Now, the part that has me shaken up here, Prophetess Kelly, is in Ezekiel chapter 44, verse number 30. It tells me that if I give the first fruits, the first of the first, that it shall be the priest that he might do what? Cause or command the blessing to what? Yes. Rest on my what? My house. house. Now, when we go back to Malachi chapter 3 and round about verse number um, 10, amen, 9 and 10, um, we can begin to see something that the scripture says that prove me now herewith if I will not do what? Open oh, you. If I will yeah. not open you what? The, window. the, windows, of the windows of heaven. I wonder, Prophet is Kelly, if when Jesus was baptized in Matthew chapter 3, verse number 16, if the same windows of heaven was being opened that gets opened when we begin to get tied into the house of the Lord. All right. Mm. Wow. That's wow. good. Oh, yes. That's, That's good. good. Uh, There's another part in here that has me messed up, uh, Prophetess Belina, and this part is literary. Okay. This part here had me jacked up, Prophetess Kelly, in Matthew chapter 3, verse number 16, because it's literary. Mm -hmm. Prophetess Deborah, it says, in Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. Yes, he did. I have no problem with that. It's the next part. And lo, the heavens mm, yeah. were opened unto him. Mm. Heavens. Plural. Heavens. Plural. And I sat there, Elder Kelly... And, I, and it took yes. me a moment to yes, get it. the heavens. But I had to understand first, it's Matthew writing. Right. And if Matthew's writing, he's writing from a Jewish perspective or a uh -huh. Jewish interpretation. Yes. And yes, so yes, if yes, this yes, was the first time that heavens was mentioned inside of the New Testament, he would have had to go back to the first time that heavens was mentioned in the First Testament. And the first time that heavens was mentioned in the First Testament, it was also mentioned as a plural. Right. And God created the, heaven. the heavens and the what? Yeah. The earth. There's a uni-pluralness to it. Ah. It's a problem, Prophetess Kelly, that I have with it literarily because when we get to verse number 17, Minister Evelyn, we can begin to see that there was a voice that came from where? Heaven. 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 It's the same word. Mm -hmm. I had to do some research on it. I begin to find something. Uh -huh. In Hebrew, the word for heaven is shamayim. Shamayim. It's the im part at the end shamayim. that makes it plural. I asked my bot, is there a singular word? For heaven. Like a word without the plural ending. <laughs> Prophetess Kelly, for heaven. There is none. Right. The mm. word is still shamayim. Shamayim. Heavens. Not singular. Not. Uh, but plural. There are levels. Hey! Come on here. That's why Apostle Paul can say that I was caught up even in the what? In the seventh heaven. Come on. Hey! Said there was something that begins to happen when I understand that more than the sky opened up. Everything cosmologically opened up. Even things opened up for me in 2024 when Jesus was baptized at Jordan. Wow. And then I looked it up in the Greek. Okay. Go ahead, Prophetess Valina. I didn't have it in the Greek, but I, I did ask my bot, uh, uh, why is it plural? And it said that in the Hebrew, it's to convey the vastness of the expanse right. of the heavens. And it, 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 it's a nuance, it's a linguistic nuance that emphasizes the grandeur of the multiplicity of the celestial realm rather than indicating a singular entity. 
Yes, because we're not just talking about the sky. We're talking about the vault of expanse. We're talking about yeah. the stars, amen, right. which is the fingers or the handwriting of God. We're talking about the expanses or the universe the, that, that they understood for some reason that the heavens would have been right. plural, that yeah. there were levels. There were dispensations mm -hmm. ah. to it. Huh? And so... Um, in the Greek, the word is also a plural word. Even when it's even when it's even when it gets translated singularly, it's still a plural word. The word is oranos. 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 I thought that that was very powerful. I thought that that was very powerful. Um, and we're going to open this up further because heavens really has to do with the consciousness, yeah. that there's levels of consciousness. Yeah. We're going to open this up some more, amen, on today. Amen. Uh, you know. Yes, Elder. Elder. Bishop, like, as I'm looking at this, and it says the heavens was open, then he saw. Then he saw. Then he saw. So when the heavens open up, his eyes open. Ah. So when we bring the 2.5% to the supervising priest, his eyes open. The eyes open. And he sees for us and he commands the blessing because we're obedient. We are coming the way Jesus came before the Father. When we bring out Teruma, we are honoring the Father because the portion of the supervising priest is God. So when we bring out Teruma to the supervising priest, his eyes open mm. and he speaks. It says his eyes was open. Once That's right. he came up out of the water. That's right. So when we bring out Teruma to our supervising priest, then his eyes open and he commands the blessing on us. I didn't do it. Um, I didn't really do it, but I bet you that there is a parallel between this verse of scripture mm. in Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, and the creation narrative in Genesis chapter 1. Mm. Verses one, verses two, verses three. I mean, when you look at this here, Prophetess Kelly, you can begin to see first we have the heavens were opened up unto him. The next thing is that he saw the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. That's literally the 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 Araba Sukona Mashiach, mm. the 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 Ruach Elohim. That's what was inside of verse number two of Genesis chapter one, where the Bible declares, and and the earth was what? Without That's form, right. and it was what? Without void, mm. and darkness was on the face of the, the deep, deep, and the spirit, spirit of the Lord moved. moved upon. Yes. The Spirit of yeah. God move. Uh, um, 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 I believe, Prophet, um, that this here, I don't, I didn't do my research on it, Prophet is Deborah, but I just, I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about it now, that there's such a parallel between the creation story and this here story here that creates for us. Come on here. Amen. Because it says that he came that we might have what? Life, Life. and have it how? More, More abundantly. Abundant. Come on here. This is a maybe our creation narrative right here, ah, Prophetess yes. Deborah, That's when right. the Bible declares Jesus was baptized and went up straightway yes. out of the water. No different than how we come straightway out of the water. Behold, all things have That's passed right. away and behold, all things have what? Become mm -hmm. anew. Come on here. My God, my God. So the heavens were opened up unto him, no different than how the heavens are opened up unto me. Come on here. That God is giving me money-making money ideas. Come on here. God is allowing me to be a remarkable contribution in this fourth industrial revolution of artificial intelligence. Yes, 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 yes. That I am always succeeding and exceeding. I've been I've been saying that, Prophet Deborah. That's been my new thing I've been saying. Yes. I am always succeeding and exceeding. Asha. And I did ask my box. Go ahead. Was Prophet. there a connection between Genesis chapter one, verses one through three, and Matthew three, sixteen through seventeen? And of course my box said, Yes, there is. <laughs> yes, it did. He said, Yes, there is a thematic and symbolic connection between Genesis, Matthew one, one verses one through three, and Matthew three, 
chapter 3, verses 16 through 17, particularly concerning the concept of heavens and a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. These passages link creation themes and the idea of new beginnings, both which are central to the respective context and the Bible. And then began to go forth and began to demonstrate the connection, creation and the new creation. Yeah. The Spirit of God is showing divine Ooh. proclamation yeah, and the you, heavens. And you know go ahead. What, and you know what? Ooh. It's so powerful. This is so yes. good because somebody may be asking, said Bishop Alecki said verses one through three. We heard verse one, we heard verse two. Where's verse three? Verse three is in verse 17. Ah. See, because we don't have God saying anything until verse three, which almost brings me, Prophetess Kelly, could verse, could creation in Genesis yeah, like one and two time. be a creation that was happening in the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. But finally, in verse three, it says, and God said, hey, how about shot? In verse 17, Ooh, and lo, a voice from heaven it. saying, this yes. beloved son in whom I am well pleased, that in verse 17 and in verse three, we begin to hear the voice, the voice. of God. God. The voice is introduced. Wow. The voice. That's powerful. It may That's have good. been the introduction. Huh. Divine Thank voice. you, Jesus. Okay, okay, okay. All right, okay, all right, okay, all right. Okay, this okay. is good. This is good. Okay. All right, I'm going to move forward, family. I'm get, I got caught up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Come on, let's go ahead. Right. Elder Gray, we'll have you pick up Psalm 34 3. Psalms 34 3, King James Version. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt, exalt his, his name, name together. Go ahead. Baptized, subconsciously merge with I am God. Good, love, Jesus is such a man, a mind. Mm. I love that. Baptizing, submerging myself with the mm -hmm. I am good. I am God. I am good. good. And I am. I am. Love. Let's go to a video from Direct Productions on today. Go ahead, take us away. Have you ever wondered why some people seem to have a limitless supply of creativity, ideas, and success while others struggle to find their footing? It's all about the power of abundant thinking. This mindset, brimming with positivity and potential, can shape our reality and carve our path to success. Intriguing, isn't it? This concept, a fascinating blend of psychology and philosophy, will be the focus of our exploration today. The key to unlocking this seemingly limitless potential lies in our mind's ability to embrace abundant thinking. Abundant thinking is not about having everything, but believing you have enough and more will come. To grasp this concept, let's delve a bit deeper. Abundant thinking, in essence, is a perspective, a worldview, a mindset that embraces the idea of endless possibilities and opportunities. It's a belief that there is more than enough in this world for everyone. Now let's contrast this with the scarcity mindset. Scarcity thinking operates on the notion of limitations, that there's never enough to go around, that resources are finite, and that we must compete for what's available. It's a mindset that fosters fear, stress, and a sense of constant struggle. On the other hand, abundant thinking encourages positivity, gratitude, and a belief in limitless possibilities it's a mindset that says, I have enough and I am enough. It's about recognizing the wealth of opportunities around us and understanding that the universe is expansive, not restrictive. It's about believing in your potential and knowing that your desires can become your reality. Abundant thinking is about seeing opportunities where others see obstacles, seeing potential where others see problems. It's about shifting from a mentality of lack to a mentality of abundance, from a mindset of scarcity to a mindset of plenty. In essence, abundant thinking is about cultivating a mindset that sees the world as a place of plenty rather than scarcity. Now, you might be wondering, how can one cultivate an abundant mindset? The answer lies in a few simple yet powerful practices that can transform your perspective and ignite your inner power. Firstly, let's talk about gratitude. It's the cornerstone of abundant thinking. Every day, make it a point to appreciate the good in your life. This doesn't mean you ignore challenges, but rather, you acknowledge them without letting them overshadow your blessings. Gratitude has a way of amplifying the positive and shrinking the negative. Next, visualize your success. See yourself achieving your goals and feel the emotions attached to those achievements. Visualization is more than mere daydreaming. It's a potent tool that can help you manifest your desired reality. Remember, your mind can't distinguish between what's real 
and what's imagined. So feed it with images of your success. Embrace change. Change is the only constant in life. Instead of resisting it, learn to ride the wave of change with grace and adaptability. This might sound daunting, but it's a skill you can develop. With each change comes new opportunities, new experiences, and new avenues for growth. It's also vital to avoid negative self-talk. Those little voices in your head that tell you, I can't, or it's too hard, they're not your friends. Challenge them, replace them with affirmations of your strength, capability, and worth. Your words have power, use them wisely. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, be consistent and patient. Cultivating an abundant mindset isn't an overnight process. It's a journey, a gradual shift in perspective. Your mind, like a garden, needs time to grow and flourish. Nurture it with positive thoughts, weed out the negative ones, and give it time to transform. Remember, abundant thinking is a journey, not a destination. It requires practice, patience, and above all, belief in the power of your mind. So start today and witness the magic unfold. So how does abundant thinking transform your life? You might ask. Well, the impact of abundant thinking is far-reaching and profound. It's like sowing a seed in fertile soil. The result is a lush, thriving garden. One of the most significant benefits of abundant thinking is the boost it gives to your creativity. When you believe in endless possibilities, your mind becomes a fertile ground for innovative ideas and solutions. You start seeing opportunities where others see obstacles. Moreover, abundant thinking fosters resilience. It empowers you to bounce back from setbacks and keep pushing forward, knowing that more opportunities are always on the horizon. But that's not all. Abundant thinking can also pave the way for success in various aspects of life. It can enhance your relationships, fuel your career growth, and foster personal development. You start attracting positivity and prosperity because you believe in their abundance. Abundant thinking is more than a mindset. It's a way of life that can significantly enhance your potential for success and fulfillment. So, to recap the key points from today's video, Abundant thinking is a mindset that invites unlimited possibilities into your life. It's achieved by asking the right questions, embracing positivity, and pushing past self-imposed boundaries. The benefits are profound, from enhanced personal growth to a richer, more fulfilling existence. With abundant thinking, the world becomes a playground of endless possibilities. Start your journey towards abundant thinking today and unlock your limitless potential. Thinking abundance. I think abundantly, yes, therefore I receive I abundantly. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I liked how you said that, Prophetess Deborah. Yeah, because I think it, therefore I am. Yes. Because you're always out picturing what's already on the inside of you. Oh, I like so that. So that, that's why I would say it that I way. I think abundance. Therefore I, I am. am. Therefore I am abundant. Right. Oh. I can only be that which, which I am already on because it's already inside of me. And, you know, I wonder if that's what Jesus meant when he said that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Ah. Okay. If you've seen me, you've seen a Because he's already out picturing It's being out pictured eh, inside yes, of me. Yes, oh, yes, come on yes, here. That's yes, good. yes, yes. And, you know, God works in abundance. You know, that's that's that that's the way God does because it says that he'll do exceedingly. Oh, y'all need to get started. Abundantly. Come on, abundantly. Yeah, come he'll on do now. more yeah, than you, you can you ever know. ask or think. or think. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it's according to the power that, that works within you. That is working. Come on. Like an inside job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's an yes, inside it job. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's good. Inside working on the outside. All right. It's an inside job. Come on here, Prophetess Hallelujah. Melina. We'll have you pick up. Hey. Um, Bishop, before you move from this point. Please, Elder Kelly. <laughs> Thank you. Just real quick. You know, in, in looking at this video, and we know we've been taught these things, but it... it drove it home, you know, the mind doesn't understand a joke. The mind under, doesn't understand anything that you don't tell it. If you, whatever you tell the mind, the mind is going to take that as concrete. It's going to believe what you say. It's going to believe what you begin to move towards because it doesn't know the difference. Right. I, we get <laughs> caught up because we, that's why the Bible says a double-minded man it's is unstable in all his ways. his ways. Because he's not sure. And the mind doesn't know how to work between those two dichotomies. But if we 
stick to the abundant mindset, we're going to have abundance yeah. because the mind is not judging saying, well, you know what? You're not living an abundant life right now. The mind doesn't know to say that. We say that and we cut off our own blessings. So we have to be mindful what we're feeding the mind. That's, that video was so powerful because the mind only knows what we tell it. Yes. Come on here. Keep your mind on a diet of abundance. Ooh, mm -hmm. that's good. Wow. I keep my mind. There's Ooh, a lot of diets diet, out there. Huh? There's Atkins diet. <laughs> there's a South yeah. Beach diet. Paleo there's diet. There's a paleo diet. The keto diet. The Cabin carnivore diet. diet the sugar buster diet. Amen. Amen. The cake. Diet. The cake milkshakes and pies diet. The That's cabbage, one of my favorite cabbage. diets of the belief. Seafood <laughs> diet. Seafood. The seafood. seafood. I'm on the seafood well, diet. Right. Seafood you and eat. see the food and eat it. That's, That's right. Amen. But can I keep my mind? Mind oh, on the diet of abundance. Yes. Wow. Mm, that's that good. means I only feed it the good stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, I only, I'm only feeding my mind the good stuff. Wait a minute, I can't have that. So you start finding yourself being allergic to negative thinking. Come on here, I'm allergic right. to impoverished ideas. I can't have that, amen, because I know what I need, amen. I and my father are financially one. Come on here, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what I need, amen and amen. I am abundant because I'm thinking abundant. I know what I need. Amen. I you I better be clear. Be Amen. I keep my mind on an abundant diet. Jesus. That's good. And you know, that's interesting. An abundant diet it becomes a, you know, I like acronyms. So it's, it, the word is add. Isn't that good? Abundant diet. Abundant diet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's continue on. All right. Here we go. This is good. All right, Prophet Xavier, we'll have you go ahead. Skip me. Oh, it's on you, Elder Valina. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm invisible. Heaven opening. <laughs> Lord, Heaven opening indicates a man a mind seeing himself from God's mm. highermost spiritual divine point of view. When heaven thus opens, a man's a mind's ear also open Ooh. so that he hears the word of God, the proclamation of his highermost self revelation and relationship. This is my beloved son mm -hmm. in whom I am well pleased. St. Matthews 317. Yes, yes, yes. When heaven thus opens, a man's mind's ears also open. Mm. And um, during the, during the um, we were sharing about that. Just when, when, when mm -hmm. this guy, we were sharing about it while the video was playing, Minister Evelyn, how there's so many times that we relate the blessing right. to something that is tangible. Yes. Right. I wonder, I just wonder, it's just an inquiry. I wonder if the blessing is auditory, mm -hmm. meaning that it's able to be heard. Oh, I got excited about this. Jesus. Oh my God, Jesus. my God. Bring it. Which means something here. That the tangible thing okay. that we relate to the blessing okay. may really only be the evidence of that which was already auditorily heard. Right, right, Come right, on right, here. Right, right, That's right. why I love that when God blesses Abraham, he doesn't give him a thing. Right. He gives him a word. A word. A word. A word. Go ahead, Obi Gray. Bishop Black is very powerful because when he gives that word about the blessing, he doesn't describe the things that will come out of that blessing. Mm -hmm. He just say blessing. So that means the blessing can 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 amount to any amount of things. Come on it's here. It's not limited once the blessing is pronounced. So when the archbishop says, I command the blessing of your house, because it's a rumor the blessing coming through a relationship. An opportunity, a breakthrough, a financial increase. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So there's, no, there's no limit. There's no limit. There's no limit when he say, I bless you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That uh -huh. blessing now becomes the eternal manifestation of everything that we may need 
to fulfill our destiny. See, because when we've that's gotten the a word, we've gotten a thing. See, that's the thing that's so powerful about this here, that the word is the thing. That's why I love that when the Bible says all nations shall, shall do call, what? Shall call, call you blessed. Bless. They're going to affirm the word of God that has already been what? Spoken. Spoken. Yeah, and you know that is so powerful because what I'm thinking, the importance of having a prophet in your life. Yes. 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 It's vital because life, yes. um, what does the prophet do? The prophet is going to give you the word of yes, the Lord. Come and on. Many of us, we come to the prophet like the widow woman. Like the widow woman. Uh, 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 she's, well, you know, I need help. You know, my, my, my husband was faithful and he left us with nothing. I'm paraphrasing. And, and right now, um, they're coming to take my two sons away. The prophet didn't give her no money. He didn't give her money. He gave her mm. a, a word. word. He gave her a word. I'm reminded in Acts when... Um, when, the, when the, the disciples, the apostles, they, they, they were moving about, and a man at the gate called Beautiful began right. to yes. call out to him, I need help, help me, help me. You know, <laughs> and, and, and they, Peter, I believe, began to look at him. He said, silver and gold have yes. I none, yes. but such yes. as yes. I have, I give unto you. Rise up and be, it was a word. It was a word. A word. So it's going to be the word that's going to bring forth the deliverance. It's going to be the word that's going to bring forth the prosperity. Yes. Even when you talked about um, um, Bishop Elect about um, Abraham, the word that came to him, he said, I'm going to bless your seed. You're not going to be able to come on the blessing. Look at the stars, look at the sand. So it's the word. It's that the word. Out. Once you got that word, you got it all. You got it. Come on here. Yes. Y'all better come Woo! on here. That yeah. word is going to bring that us. So powerful. You, you said that. So, so Bishop Elect and, and, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Elder Kelly, and then we're going to come on to Elder Gray. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, could we safely say then, if there is no word in the matter, then there's no blessing over the matter? Ooh, that's right. Jesus. That's, that's, right. Good. that's, that's good. right. And you know when, when you finish, Elder? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And when Pastor was speaking, it's like when we sow the seed. We are pulling the word out of the prophet. Mm. And we don't know exactly what word we need for that season that we're in or the season that we're approaching. But when we release that seed, the prophet knows and he releases that word as the blessing. Mm. So we pull the word when we sow the seed and the word has the blessing in it. And that's why when it comes to the supervising priest with the Taruma. We have to constantly keep honoring our supervising priests so that there will be a ring of blessings that will be in our house continuously. Yeah, like we sure. withhold the teruma, we withhold the blessing. Ah, and as sure. long as the mouth of the supervising priest is open over our life, we are constantly walking in the blessing. But when we stop honoring our supervising priest, we shut down the blessing. Thank you, mm. Jesus. Powerful. You know, um, yes, Minister Barbara. You know that word, that logos, is is divine truth, and it's it's life. And I love the scripture that speaks about for the word of God is alive and active. Mm. Yes. So Strap it's forever it going forth. To mm. whom who will receive it? But the word is out there, mm. and we speak life because speak our life. words are created. By the words that we speak. Yes. Our worlds are created by, by the, the words, words that, that we, we speak. speak. Come yes. on here. Yes, 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 yes. But you know, the same way in the scriptures it talks about, you know, because some people might be saying, well, prop, you know, because I know the churches that I came out of, they didn't have like this amount of prophets. But I equated that to uh, the scripture found in Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, which it says, and he gave apostles, prophets. Please correct me if I'm incorrect in my, in my assumption. But the same way all these, all these churches have pastors, mm -hmm. and there are and even in some churches they have multiple pastors, that's why you definitely, because this is a part of the fivefold ministry, you definitely mm -hmm. need a prophetic word. You need a prophet in your life that says speaking the word of God to you and not just a teaching word of God, but a word that's going to help you navigate through the obstacles of life, Bishop Elect. Powerful, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. You know, uh, this is very interesting, uh, um, Elder Valina, because you said that, and I said, "Wow, yes, you do need all of the fivefold ministry in the house." I said, but then I thought, well, the pastor, 
uh, pronounces blessings over us, but then Spirit quickly mm. <laughs> retracted that, said, but he doesn't cause the best blessing to rest in the house. Right. So if you want that resting in the house, then you've got to go through your supervising priest through the Taruma. But the blessing, he can pronounce a blessing, good good tidings over your life, but not that he causes, it causes, causes the blessing to cause. rest. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You know, um, this is so powerful. And, um, you know, this is why I love what our Truma does, that my Truma can go ahead of me. Yeah. My Truma allows it almost what it does is it and i love what prophet kelly just shared there to cause the it blessing to rest. rest not that just something it goes in one ear out the other it just goes and passes by amen no 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 it's resting mm. on my house because i'm honoring the lord wow. with my Jesus. first fruits amen and amen mm. and so on this afternoon elder gray just sent me something and um this is so oh, powerful this, here mm. Um, uh, uh, did you want to share it out there? Yeah, way? yeah. When when Bishop Elect was talking, and the Lord kept speaking about honoring and the blessing and the blessing our supervising priests, the Lord He just said, "Won't everybody right now do a fifty-two dollar seed to the supervising priests, saying, I thank you. Yes. I just got mine in the ground right away. It's a heavy anointing." Because God wants our supervising priests to know that we're willing to go the extra mile with the Taruma. Everything God talks about, he mm -hmm. confirms it with his word. With he confirms it with a sign following. Uh -huh. So we get in action. We get in practice of what God is saying. And he spoke it to me, and right away, I released mine right away. So all of you, at the sound of the voice of the company of prophets, Everyone, is all right? I have to have permission. Everyone sold that $52 seed to our supervisor and priest right now, where he's at in Las Vegas. So his cash app go ding, 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 ding. And he's, what's going on? And he's like, ding, 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 ding. It's like raining, just raining on him. Amen and, and amen. And if you're here and you're going to honor the supervisor and priest right now with that $52 seed, type it in. I am one. I am one. I am one. All I right. am one. I am one. Come yes. on. Type it in the room. I am one. I am one. I am one. I am one. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 I went ahead and I did it. I wouldn't have uh -huh. been a part yeah. on today. Amen and amen. I am one. Because there's something I know. So when we yeah, saw the truma, I believe that our archbishop, though he doesn't, though we may not, um, he didn't come live and say the name loudly yet. I think that once it comes through Prophetess Kelly on his phone, even when, even if he's saying it to himself, mm -hmm. it's like there, there's a word that's mm -hmm. spoken. God, thank God for blessings yeah. to, you know, wh whatever the cash app in. Oh my God. Uh, uh, there was Joshua just said, that, God bless. And it's something that I think that is taking place and moving in our midst, in our situation as we begin to release it. So, family, if that's you, amen, that was They're saying, responding. They're yes, responding. I'm Respect in, Pastor, I'm in. Pastor, they're responding. I'm in, hey, I'm Jesus. in, I'm in, I'm in, yes. I'm in, I'm in. I had to get that seed in. I got to get it in. I got to get it in on today. Amen and amen. Because when heaven is open, my ears are open. My yeah, God. Yes and yes. Because you're talking about the blessing and pastor's talking about the blessing. Why should we hear talking about the blessing instead of participating in it? And we know that our supervising priest has the blessing in his mouth for us. It's in his mouth. All right. Oh, shut up, Moshe. I already did my trauma from today anyway. But this is an instruction from the Lord specifically for the body, for the team, for the company to do the 52 For the community. Season. Yes, yes, yes. And that was 52 weeks of favor. Oh. Amen. Ah. That we're declaring, amen, God to move in every week of this year. Amen. All right. Let's continue on. Uh, Prophet Xavier will have you read the next slide. Oh, man, the God, did you want us to share or add something? Oh, no, I'm, I'm complete. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Prophet. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. All right. The dove indicates that the mind sees his pure divinity and that God has given us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy one and seven. There is something in everyone 
with which God is always well pleased. Divine sonship, divine oneship. I love, reverence, praise, and exalting the divine sonship, the divine oneship of myself and everyone in whom God is well pleased. Amen. All right, prophetess and minister Evelyn. What are you magnifying and exalting in yourself, in people and things? I exalt the higher most name, nature, love of God in myself and in everyone. God is love. First John 4 uh, verse 8. I exalt the sweet harmony of divine love in myself and everyone. I exalt the sweet symphony of divine, oh, let me just move that out. Of divine. divine being in myself and everyone. Our Father in heaven indicates that God is the higher most reality and totality of man, mind, me, and everyone. Yes, 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 yes. Whatever I'm magnifying gets multiplied back unto me. Mm -hmm. All right. That's whatever it is that I'm magnifying, it gets multiplied back into me. I believe I learned it this way, Prophetess Deborah, that wherever attention goes, mm -hmm. power flows. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's good. And, That's, um, good. That's good. Even minimizing something. You know, you got to be mindful sometimes of minimizing something because even when I minimize it, I may be energizing it. Mm -hmm. I may be giving my attention to it. Your yep. power right, right here. Mm -hmm. That's why it goes back to my mind is on a diet of abundance. Come on here. Wow. I can't focus on anything but the highest most nature, the, the highest. highest most nature of yes. love of God that is in me and in everyone. All right. Let's continue. Um, Prophetess Kelly. When we magnify and exalt God in us, then God manifests and exalts himself in, through, and as us. Reverend Ike. Yes, yes, yes. It reminds me of that song. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Yes. All right, all right, all right. All right. Y'all ain't going to give me that. For oh, he is worthy to be praised. You better watch it now. Here it comes. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Yeah. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. All right, family. Yes, 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 yes. You know, there was something also about those songs, about those hymnals, that would shift your mood. That if you were in a in a in an upset or in a, you would have to just go back to singing one of those songs, yes. Amen. And it would shift something oh, yes. in you. Shift Why is atmosphere. that? Because I'm giving my attention to the higher most. Ah, this mm. my mic drop. Oh this yeah. Shit taught us that what you sing, you become. Praying mm. twice. Praying twice. Praying twice. twice. That's what it was. Yeah. Amen. Two times. Two times. <laughs> Hell, we Amen. All right. Let's continue on here. Um, we'll have Minister Barbara read this next slide for us. This is. This is divine reaction to our praise. For every action, there is a reaction. All right. Glory to God reacts and results as glory, glory. to you. Ooh. Therefore. Ooh. Let us go forth into life with the shout in our souls. Glory. Glory to God in the highest. And my soul does magnify the Lord. Luke 1 and 46. Glorify God and God glorifies you. Glorify thou me, Jesus. John 17 and 5. God and man, mine are to glorify in a never ending Cycle. It should be a never-ending cycle. Never-ending mm -hmm. cycle. Of increase and enjoyment. Yes, 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 yes. I love that. Amen and amen. All right. Don't read. That's um, it. I think it's the... We're going to take us home. All right, family. Repeat after me. 
I magnify and exalt the livingness, lovingness, and goodness of God in the midst of me. I magnify and exalt the livingness, lovingness, and godness of God in the midst of me. You, everyone, I magnify and exalt God in me. You, uh, you. you everyone, I magnify and exalt God in me. As my fulfillment, fulfillment. Fulfillment and fulfillment mm. of love, Jesus. affection, friendship, <laughs> fellowship, wow. and companionship. Say it again. I'm sorry. Wow, that's powerful. <laughs> wow. That was a mouthful. Yeah, that was powerful. Wow. Okay, okay. Started my, as, 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 as my fulfillment, 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 and fulfillment of love, affection, friendship, fellowship, and companionship. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. And I want to declare the teaching complete. Wow. That was this. We pray you got. That, <laughs> that was this. Like, wow. what? Wow. Pray! I've been holding that from the beginning of the teaching. And I had it in my ears because I thought you were going to do it. Ready. I took it out because I felt like it was safe. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's never safe. It's never safe if it does. <laughs> well, what's the breaking news? I, I thought you would never ask. Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. Master Prophet, we have one of our very own. One, one of, of our, our very own. own. Yes, Master Prophet, one of our very own. And it's none other than no. our very own prophetess. Oh, I messed up my thing that came up. Yeah, I got excited. Yeah, it's none other than my very, our very own prophetess and elder, Valina Bratton, who has Woo! sold the $2,024.24 seeds for today. I did. Amen. <laughs> you yes, did. Yes. Yes, you did. Just thought. Just thought. Just thought <laughs> you should know. Oh, no, y'all. What's happening? <laughs> All right. Let's hit it, DJ. Let's hit it. Breaking news. That's the prophet. We have some breaking news. I'm glad I have a good heart. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Is that breaking news? Master Prophet, breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. Master Prophet, we have one of our very own. One of our very own. Yes, Dr. Jordan, one of our very own. And it's none other than our very own Heavenly Ingram Janvier, who has sown the $1,000 seed this afternoon. Master Prophet, hallelujah. Well, let's hit it, let's hit it, let's hit it. All right, let's hit it, DJ. Let's hit it. Let's hit it. That's the prophet. We have some breaking news. I'm glad I have a good heart. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get 
Breaking news. Oh, I thought you never breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. Master Prophet, we have one of our very own. One of our, our very, very own? own? Yes, Master Prophet, one of our very own. And it's none other than our leading lady, Master Prophet is Deborah oh. Jordan, who has sold the $1,024.24 seed. This afternoon, Woo! Master Prophet. Yeah. Just thought you, you should know. know. Let's hit it. All right, let's hit it, <laughs> DJ. DJ. Breaking news, Master Prophet. Master Prophet, we have some breaking news. I'm glad I have a good heart. Get up. Get up. Get up. We're back. And, <laughs> and we're back. And we're live, family. Welcome back. All right, family. Well, listen, it's not too late. We're looking for how many others? Is that seven, seven others? People. Amen. Seven. And you know, seven is our number of completion counting prophets. Yes. Amen. And so there's seven others that we're waiting for to complete. Amen. Um, and do this. Listen, I believe that we can do this if we stand together. There's some of us that listen. Follow the unction of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit spoke to you already. Listen, you know you're supposed to be one of those in that number, sowing the $1,000 seed on today. Go ahead, release it. Amen. And begin to watch as God begins to move. Amen. You're going to be receiving a word of the Lord, not just from the company of prophets, but you get to hear the word of the Lord from the master prophet. That's right. Amen. And so, family, we want to encourage you. Release those seed of obedience. There's seven others, amen, that need to go ahead and release that. And I know that we can do it. Amen. There's some of us that have to stretch. I've learned this here, that sometimes the seed is not in my hand, but it's in my reach. Ooh, Come on here. You just got to reach that, that, Yeah, yeah. Mm. God, that, that, and, and sometimes the reach may not be good with word, my hand, word, but the reach word. may be with my mouth. Come on here. Good that the word, reach may be, word. what have we to bring to the man of God? God? Sometimes so you got to understand the power. reason why it's not in my hand is because maybe I was trying to go see the man of God by myself. Mm. Uh, and it was really a let us, let uh, 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 it was a we. Mm. We we oh you speak in French now <laughs> yes it was, it was a, a wee moment it was a wee moment <laughs> not an I moment it wasn't an I moment it was, it was a, a wee, wee moment what have we now that's very interesting that prophetess mean? Kelly um, and Minister Evelyn when you look at the text in um, Samuel nine for Samuel nine because. Um, Saul was saying that, listen, I got to get back for my father starts concerning for me. Mm -hmm. And then he goes from me to we real quick. What have we amen, have to we? bring? And it's interesting when he said, what have we? One fourth shekel showed up. Because he, he included 
He included the, come on here. He There's some of us probably on today, Prophet this devil, that may need to include our loved ones. Come on here. Uh, I may need to get $10 or $20 or $50 right. from four or five loved ones. Come on here. And yeah. uh, uh, what have we, amen, to bring unto the man of God? And so we're getting you this. You need in. to sow that 224 seed because there's a word that yes. you need God to do. There's something that you need God to work out concerning you. We. 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 And so, family, listen, I want to encourage you. If it's not in your hand, it's in your reach. It's in and your the reach, reach sometimes Jesus. is my request. Mm, making a request. Making, right? making my request known. No. Extending an invitation. Extend, come on here. Extending an yes, invitation. Yes. Amen. On today. And you'll be surprised mm. what can begin to show up oh, yeah. when you begin to do that. Amen. All right. Yes and yes, um, Elder, Elder Gray needs an envelope. All right. Um, amen and amen. And so, family, we want to encourage you to get your seeds of faith into the ground. We're going to get ready to prophesy the word of the Lord to those that have gotten their $100 seed or more into the ground on today. And we have a couple of more unseats as well. So let's find out um, if we can get two prophets that are available to type into the chat. Go ahead. God bless you. All right. Thank you, Prophetess Juana Mooring. And we'll have you call Prophetess Loverlene Hutchinson. And God bless you and thank you as well, Prophet Bessie Allen. Peace and blessings, Prophetess Juana. Um, thank you, Prophetess Bessie Allen. We are going to give to you Amy Ross. Steve. All right. Amen and amen. All right, and find out, I'm finding out now, are there any other unseats at this time? Amen and amen. I don't know about you, but I felt a move of God take place on today. And mm. so I need to up, I need to, I need to worship, amen, the Lord. And so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to upgrade, I want to upgrade and get my seed of faith into the ground on today. Amen and amen. And so, family, um, if that's you, we want to go ahead, text to give. Um, you text one word, my worship, to 646-762-0433. Amen and amen. And um, you can get your seed of faith into the ground that way. Or you can always call it in, 888-831-0434. All right. Uh, let's find out from the moderator, do we have the list of those that have given the one hundred dollar seed or more. Amen and amen. All right. Okay, we do have the list, and so I'll call out the names. We'll go in this order. We'll do three apiece. We'll start with Worthy Classmaster Prophetess Kelly, then we'll go to Minister Prophetess Barbara Clark, then Pastor Prophetess Up, oh, then Elder Elder Alexander Gray, then Pastor Prophetess Deborah Jordan. Elder Valina and Prophet Xavier. And then back to Prophetess Evelyn. Breaking news! That's not fair. Master Prophet! That's not right. What is the breaking news? And Master Prophet, breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. Master Prophet! We have one of our very own. One of our very, our very own. own. Yes, Dr. Jordan, one of our very <coughs> own. And it's none other than our very own elder and prophet Alexander Gray, who has sown his $1,000 seed this afternoon. Master Prophet. Oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just thought you should know. All right, let's hit it, DJ. Let's hit it. Breaking news, Master Prophet. Master Prophet, we have some breaking news. I'm glad I have a good heart. Shia. Get up. Get up. Get up. I 
Master Prophet, we have one of our very own. One of our very own. Yes, Dr. Jordan, one of our very own. And it's none other than Bishop Elect and Prophet is Jessica <laughs> Jordan. We've upgraded, making our total 1,024 <laughs> cents. Amen. Yeah. On today, Master Prophet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just thought. You should know. All right, let's hit it, DJ. Let's hit it. Breaking news, Master Prophet. Master Prophet, we have some breaking news. I'm glad I have a good heart. Get up. 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 Get jiggy with it. To the left, to the left, then to the right, to the right, to the left, to the left, then to the right, to the right, to the left, to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right. All right, we're back and we're live. That means there we are, are back. five others that we're Jesus. looking for. Amen and amen. Grace. We're looking grace. for grace on today. Come yes. on, family. And amen. Amen. And so it's a number of change as well. And so change grace. is happening for us yeah. as well. Go ahead, family. Release it. Amen. As you do. All right. We're going to get ready to prophesy. And so we'll start off with our worthy class master, Prophetess Kelly. We'll give three apiece to each. All right. And number one, Catherine Mizell. Father, thank you for the word. And Catherine, I hear the Lord said this is going to be a season of much communication. It's important that you stay on top of it as opposed to letting it pile up. Christopher Scott. Christopher, I hear the Lord said be patient in this season. Know that if I said it, I'm going to perform it. Yes. And number three, Carla Mingo. Carla, I hear the Lord said this is going to be a season that you're going to find yourself changing your diet, the things that you put into the body in this season, and you're going to see a great outcome. Yes, and thank you so much, Prophetess Kelly. Our next prophet, Prophetess Barbara, um, Jennifer Carrier. Yes, Father, reveal your will. Um, Jennifer Carrier, I hear the word of the Lord saying, uh, be careful of contracts and contacts be mindful and intentional to cross the T's, dot the I's, pay attention to the detail. And that is the word of the Lord. Number five, Anne-Marie Allen. Yes, I am Jehovah Jireh, your supplier. I will provide all that you have need of. Father says, there's no lack in me and there's no lack in you. And number six, Jeremiah Campbell. This is the season of the new. Father says, out with the old, in with the new. You're going to come into new opportunities and new individuals will come into your life at this time. Amen. Thank you, Prophetess Barbara. And our next prophet, Prophet Alexander, Miriam Campbell. <clears throat> this is a season that I'm bringing you to a place of wisdom and increase. Get ready for manifestation. Our next one, Tanya Tyler. I'm opening up doors that no man can close and close doors that no man can open. This is the season of the open door. And number nine, Benjamin Davis. I begin to teach your hands to write as the scribe and lunches to rest upon the <coughs> to write your story, says the Lord. Our next prophet, thank you, Prophet Alexander. Leading lady, Pastor Prophetess Deborah. Heavenly Ingram Janvier. Yes, woman of God. I hear God say, you're going to write this is going to be a season where the frustration are going to be alleviated because creativity is going to be increased and show up on your behalf. 
Next, we have Prophetess Evelyn Lealy. Yes, woman of God, God calling you into this season, 2024, 2025, into our uh, seasons and days of balance and harmony. Get ready to rise up. It's a new season God is calling you to embrace. And lastly, Alexander Gray. Yes, man of God, God's going to cause you to do things differently and uniquely, said the Lord. And God said, get ready because you're going to even show up differently. Um, people are going to say, yeah, I, I, I know you, but there's something different about you. Man, they got get ready to rise up for the increase of God is beckoning you in this season. I receive. Thank you. Thank you so much, leading lady, Pastor Prophetess Deborah. And our next prophet is <coughs> Prophetess Valina Bratton. What is the word of the Lord to our leading lady, Pastor Prophetess Deborah Jordan? Amen. I hear the word of the Lord saying to you that your leadership is something that is very much needed and you need to speak up more. And that is the word of the Lord. Next is Robert Argus. Amen. I hear the word of the Lord saying to you that understanding is the principal thing. So get understanding before you speak out. And lastly, Joshua and Jessica Jordan. Amen. I hear the word of the Lord saying to the both of you that there's going to be a divine inspiration that's going to bring about this change in the household that is going to just rally everybody together to be of one mind. Amen and amen. We receive it. Thank you so much. Amen. Our next prophet is Prophet Xavier. What is the word of the Lord to Elder Valina and Elder David? Right. Father, speak through me. And I hear the word of the Lord saying, traveling, exploration, I'm taking you to lands far and near, places you've not dreamed of as of yet. God says, get ready for the manifestation and the new unfoldings. Amen. Next is Theodore Jackson. I hear the word of the Lord saying, you have a story to tell. Begin to write it, begin to speak it, and don't shy away from any speaking engagements in this season. And your Loverlene Hutchinson. And I hear the word of the Lord saying there's something about entertainment and uh, broadcasting is going to be very favorable to you in this season. Uh, continue to embrace those endeavors in this season. Thank you so much, Prophet Xavier. And our next prophet, Minister Evelyn, what is the word of the Lord to Yolanda Rojas? And I hear the word of the Lord saying this is a season for renewing things, new things around you. Lord said get rid of the old things and make room for the new and Angela Baker. And I hear the word of the Lord saying for you, um, Angela, I hear the word of the Lord saying season of, of travel. Lord of Lord said he's opening up doors for you. So the Lord said, don't think you won't be able to do it. You will be able to travel as you wish. And that is what the Lord. Amen and amen. And Carol McIntyre. And Carol McIntyre, I hear the word of the Lord saying, write the book. There's so much that you have to put in this book that's going to relieve what you're holding on to. And that's the word of the Lord. Thank you so much, Prophetess Evelyn. Our next prophet, back to the top, Prophetess Gloria Kelly. We're going to give to you Nikki Blaine. Nikki, I hear the Lord say that all things are working together for your good in this season. Shirley Fox. Shirley, I hear the Lord said this is going to be a season you're going to find yourself not only thinking outside of the box, but God says acting outside of the box. Mm. And your last one, Sherman Pegues. And a prophet Sherman, I hear the Lord said this is going to be a season that you have to be steady as you go. Um, be mindful in rushing into things in this season. Think it out thoroughly. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise on today. Um, we need, if I can get two prophets that are available to type on into the chat. I think they are, that are available for unseats. All right, thank you, thank you. All right, Prophetess Shirley Fox, are you there, mighty woman of God? Yes, I am. Thank you, Prophetess Shirley. We're going to give to you um, Carol McIntyre, as well as Nikki Blaine. Thank you, I receive it. Thank you, mighty woman of God. Peace and blessing. God bless you, Prophetess Rhonda Jackson. Are you there? 
Yes, sir. All right, we're going to give to you our very own Deacon and Prophet Sherman Pegues. And we'll also have you call Alexander Gray. See. Thank you so much, Prophetess Rhonda Jackson. Amen and amen. All right, and I believe that that completes our list. All right, let's go ahead and find out those members of the Company of Prophets that are available to do presbytery on today. Good afternoon, Prophetess Vanity Dennis. God bless you, Prophetess Vanity Dennis. We'll have you in room A6. Prophet Dr. Nikea Brown. Come on here, Prophet Doctor. All right. Hold my shot. Yes, sir. Come on here. We're going to have Prophet Dr. Nikea. She'll be in A1. Amen. Better watch you watch your voice. You the mayor. Hey, my son. All right, come on to A1 for for Dr. Nikea. Hey, man, I love it. Anyone else? Prophetess Shirley Fox. God bless you, Prophetess Shirley Fox. We're going to have you in room A7, mighty woman of God. Thank you. All right. Amen. Thank you. Do we have any other prophets? It's Tiffany McCoy. God bless you, Prophetess Tiffany McCoy. We're going to have you in room A8. Amen. Peace and blessings. All right, do we have any other prophets that are available? All right, family. Well, we bless the Lord for the members of the Company of Prophets. We have our minister and prophet and Dr. Nyakia in room A1, Prophetess Vanity Dennis in A6, Prophetess Shirley Fox in A7, and Prophetess Tiffany McCoy in A8. Amen and amen. God bless you, family, and we'll be back here live at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Amen. 6 p.m. Yes, it's all right. Amen. So enjoy your lunch. Amen. And we will be right back. Remember, destiny is not left up to chance, but it's, it's a, a matter, matter of, matter of choice. choice. Choose Christ. Ashe. 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 Destiny is not left up to chance, but it's just a matter of choice. is waiting for you to declare who you are. I am America's Black Prophet. I am America's Black Prophet. I am America's Black Prophet. America's Black Prophet. I am America's Black Prophet. I am America's Black I, I, I am America's Black.